All right, what's up, everybody? Getting a little bit of an early start here by just a couple of minutes so we can give everybody a chance to kind of get situated, get in here, see what's going on. And uh, we're going to talk about some Thunder Junction. Oh, man, y'all have me in like a uh, surround sound here. Let's not let's not do that. All right. Give me a chance to make sure everything's coming up the way it should on all the different platforms because we're going to be multi-streaming in four places today this is kind of the new norm. All right, looks like we're up on YouTube, looks like we're up on Facebook, double check Twitch, we look like we're running, and I need to check uh, over on X, as they call it, I still call it Twitter, but <laughs> all right, cool, we are up everywhere, all right, so off to a good start, nothing broken, everything works the way it's supposed to, hey, Fat Marv and Joe Fultz, good to see y'all here. Milan, how's it going? Hey, team, Davy J, welcome. So, yeah, everybody's getting in here a little bit early. I like to see it, like to see it. So, yeah, here's what we're going to do. Like always, whenever we do these streams, we're going to have you submit deck lists. You need to submit them to a deck site, and then I will get them from the deck site, load them into Arena, and we will talk about it with everybody. Now, there are some restrictions. Because if you're on certain platforms, we can't actually post links in the chat. So we can't do that on YouTube. If you're on Twitch, you can post a link. I can grab the link. If you're on YouTube, you cannot post a link. Uh, I believe it'll show up here if you post it on Twitter. I think it'll show up here if you post it on Facebook. However, if I don't see it, the link to this to our Discord is in the description. You can go there and go to the standard section or standard, whatever we call it, channel of the server. And if you go there, then I can get your deck list. When the time comes, I, anybody posted early, doesn't count. Got to wait till we say go, just to be fair to everybody. Uh, matter of fact, let me pull up the link. I will post it here so everybody can have it as well. Uh, here we go. To the discord actually what's funny is i'm gonna post it here from the service that i'm using but i don't know if it automatically posts this in every chat for y'all so let's find out what happens this is exciting for me because I okay it does yeah it pops up everywhere okay because i see it there on facebook on youtube on twitch it does not post it on x which is interesting so i will manually go post it on oh i know why it's because Elon broke all the APIs on Twitter, so nothing connects anymore. <sighs> like, Twitter, man, I don't think people understood how Twitter was, how good it was a while ago. Like, real talk. Like, Twitter was legit usable. It was, like, the center of so many discussions. You could link so many different services to it, so it had a bunch of, like, just usefulness. And now you can't do anything with it. It's very sad. Very sad. Okay. Okay. So let me go ahead and check the Discord out. Do I got people? I already got some of y'all jump in the queue. That ain't going to count. That ain't going to count if y'all jump the queue. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, all the people that jump queue, those will not count. Just so you know. Actually, we only had one person jump queue, so we're, we're not going to count that. All right. So now, here are the only rules to your decks. They need to be standard. Well, I mean, they don't need to be standard. But if they are standard, you're going to have a better chance of getting better full feedback because that's all I've really played Thunder Junction with so far. The other is chat. Feel free to participate. If you have a cool idea of some new card I'm not thinking of or I forgot about or whatever, Feel free to mention it. I'm sure I'm going to forget something. They are literally, what do we have? Like 300 and some new cards, 340, 350 cards, something. I don't know. This set's really big. And a bunch of them are rares and mythics I haven't played with yet. So there's a real chance I'm going to overlook something. Other than that, just have fun. Don't take this too seriously. I got people all the time that just come into my videos and they want to like complain. Rah! And I'm like, is that all you took away from the video? Like one thing you didn't like or one dumb play my opponent made or some stupid mistake I made and like, in a 40-minute video, that's your takeaway? Like, man, go touch grass. Like, seriously. And I don't mean that in, like, a sarcastic way, but, like, really, get out in nature. Like, relax a little bit. Some people take gaming way too seriously, and I don't understand why. 
Or, like, why show up and just be rude to somebody? Or when somebody needs deck help, just insulting them, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense. Like, just chill, bro. Seriously. Like, I honestly, I was just talking to this with somebody the other day. I genuinely, and I mean this legitly, I genuinely feel bad for the people I see that just have to badmouth every thread they see on like Facebook or Twitter, or they go into people's YouTube comments and just want to insult them because of like, I don't know, some misplay or some dumb color shirt they have on or whatever. And it's like, these are strangers, people you don't even know, but like your first instinct is to just be mean or rude to somebody. And most of the time it doesn't even matter. I just delete the people or, you know, ban them or whatever. But like, I wonder how bad that person's life is. That so you feel good or you feel validated or whatever, your instinct is to go, well, I'm going to go make somebody else feel miserable or I'm going to go insult somebody, right? Like, or if you like something, like a good example is we were talking about this on the podcast this week. Tons of people really, really like the new Fallout show, right? Lots of good reviews. But the negative ones I've seen have literally been because like one thing isn't the thing they like that didn't get translated perfectly from the video game. And because of that, got to throw the whole thing out. It's all trash, right? And it's like, so you started out looking for a thing negative to nitpick so you can say the whole thing's trash instead of going, man, all of this is actually really cool, except for this one thing. That would have been cool if that was upgraded, but I still really like this show. You know, that'd be like me complaining about, I don't know, WrestleMania, because that was like a crazy weekend, right? All this cool stuff happened and just be like, but Roman Reigns lost, so the whole eight hours of weekend show is just trash, right? Like, that's terrible. There were so many awesome things that happened. So, like, I don't get one result I want, so all of a sudden, I'm, you know, like, I don't know. I, I guess too many people, my point is, don't be one of those people that's just looking for negatives first, right? Try to find the positive in something first, especially if it's something you enjoy, whether it's a TV show, music, video games, magic, board games, whatever, Try to find something fun in it first, because here's the other reality. If it's only making you mad, maybe you don't need it in your life. Seriously, like there's people I see that literally on social media every day complaining about magic, about wizards, about Rosewater, about Hasbro, about whatever. And like at some point, I'm just like, if this is making you this mad every day, why do you still come around? Why do you still consume content? Why do you still do all these things? Right. And I get it. Like, I'm not saying don't express negativity if you don't agree with something, sure. But if, like, years go by and you don't agree with anything, <laughs> bruh, you, you need to go do something that makes you happy. Seriously. Just have fun. Oh, no, 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 no. I, like, okay. See, this comment here of just don't use social media, in theory, works. But, like, this applies to people in real life. I see people do it at the at the grocery store. Like, they just want to take their daily anger out on, like, the person just working the self-checkout thing because the machine broke. Like, it's that person's fault that the thing didn't scan right, right? And they literally come over and just, like, swipe their card, hit a button, and their thing's fixed. You didn't have to give the person the business. You could have just been like, hey, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I don't understand what happened. It's telling me my thing won't scan or whatever. And the person comes over, fix it, and goes, there you go. And you say, thank you, and then finish scanning your stuff. You don't have to be like, damn, you know, I need you to come over here because this machine's effing broken and it never works and blah, blah. It's like that person. I mean, they're not even getting paid that much. <laughs> like, why are people like this? Seriously. But Torf, Michael, we've got Sergio in the chat. A little aloof. I don't know if you really are aloof, but that's a funny name. Uh, let's see. It says related review for a breakfast place near me. Great food, great drinks, great service, clean space. I wish they had bottomless mimosas, four stars. <laughs> Dude, I've seen those for real. Like everything's awesome, but you lose a star because you don't have infinite drinks or something, right? It's like, and, I, and I've reviewed a lot of places because I have a personal thing because I've run a business before. So when I go out, I try to, especially when I see something good or have a nice experience, leave a positive review because so many people only leave reviews when something's negative. And I'm just, and I've left reviews They're like, man, all of this was great would have been nice if they were open an hour later or i wish they would have had this because the wait was a little bit long or something or whatever but if service was good cost was good like everything was done the way i wanted it to whatever then like cool you still get the five stars like 
I'll just put it in the description just so people know that, heck, hey, here's a thing that this may not be for you. Like, people are weird, man. People are weird. Can I deduct you? <laughs> Can I deduct you from my taxes a psychological treatment? Uh, not really, because I don't have a certification. But if I did, absolutely. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to get to deck, doing deck stuff here in just a second. But this is uh, Asha, or Ashe, I say, because it's a long A. Uh, I brought up a topic on the MTG Arena Reddit page about how I deal with ropers. I got downvoted left and right just for offering a tip. Some people, yeah, that's true too. That's true too. And and I and this is like a year or two ago. I did a couple of videos where some people were roping, and I was having fun with it. I played like some slow jam music, and I used that as a moment to tell you about like some events I was going to be at or whatever. Right, just use the downtime for like the two minutes of the video. And I'm kind of just like, as my English friends would say, taking the piss out of the situation. But people were mad about that. There were generally some people like, I don't know why he's wasting our time. And like, you could literally just skip forward in the video to the end of the game and start the next game. Like, I put timestamps in there. You didn't have to sit through it. But they were so mad <laughs> that I was just making a joke and making light of the situation. And it's just like, man, I don't know. It's just, I don't know, people, people are that way. All right, anyway, let's go. Why don't you, if you are on Twitch or on Facebook, you can you should be able to post the link right to the chat for your deck list. If not, post your link in the Discord, which I will post the link again for those who didn't see it, in the standard channel on our in our Discord. And then I will start grabbing those deck lists, and then we will see what we can do to help you make your decks better. Uh, so I saw a four of five star Google review for a doctor with the comment. He saved my life. Gosh, damn. What does he have? Like, what do you have to do for the for the fifth star? Like, make it free? Like, if you did everything good and the nurses were nice and the doctor's office handled your stuff great, like, cool. He did his job. That's a five star. People are wild out here, man. <laughs> like, for real. Like, Folks, folks are crazy, man. They're looking like that's like people I know who grew up with teachers that didn't believe in giving hundreds on papers or whatever because nothing's perfect. You know, like just weird stuff. I'm just like, why? Why are people like this? It's so strange. Makes no sense to me, man. Like, enjoy your life, you know, have some fun with it. Uh, All right. Let's see what we got going on. All right. I have, I'm double checking the different platforms here. Also, welcome all of you that are hanging out on Twitter. I, I was really surprised how many people watch the live stream on Twitter. I didn't, oh no, I didn't think that many people were going to watch it there. So really cool to see that. Uh, also, those of you who are on Twitch, especially my longtime regulars, welcome. And to those of you hanging out on Facebook and on the YouTubes. So, yeah, people watch streaming all over the place. It's really interesting to see how y'all use stuff. But, all right, I'm going into, let's see, we're going to start with Fire Knuckle. You get to be the first one today. Let me hop over to your Moxfield link. I'm going to grab your deck list. We'll put it into the arena, and we will see what happens. Uh, is this a complete list? It is a complete list. All right. It was weird the way it was broken down for a second. <laughs> Uh, also, if you're just going to post a list that's already done, like we're not going to be that excited about it. We want to talk about some lists that are fun or different or new or whatever. Uh, what do we got here? Just guy multi spell. Uh oh, this is probably a list that I'm going to tell you words you're not going to want to hear, and I'm going to be very very sad about this. Uh. Nezes, hey, says, we are here. You are here. Thank you for being here. Yef says, hello to you as well. Cool. Uh, what do we got here? Hello, Dragon. It's nice to catch you live. Hey, Sinosarge. How's it going? Okay, so this looks to be a Just Guy spells type deck. Prowess stuff going on. And I'm... <sighs> I'm a little torn on this, and hear me out. I've tried a few different versions of, is it 
or just guy stuff in the past couple of seasons. And it's been tough, man. I think it's the worst. Yeah, is it particularly? Is probably the worst color combination to play in Magic right now in Standard. And even in current Thunder Junction Shield. Probably the worst right now. I Older formats, obviously, it's good because you can play like Is It Phoenix and stuff like that, right? Those are real decks. But I feel like I'm trying to word this exactly right. So I'm not being it's coming off as like I'm trying to be like bitter or insulting because I've, I've spent a lot of time working on this. Yeah, pirates, I don't think are as good as a lot of other things you can do. I, I include pirates in that. Mostly because like our pirate, like, and don't be wrong, pirates are probably the best version of Is It and can still win some games. But, you know, are pirates going to be better than something that's like, blue green with all the new like land fetching and deserts and whatever is it going to be better than blue black with all the various like mid-range and control elements is it going to be better than blue white control right like pairing those colors up isn't necessarily any better are pirates better than mono green better than mono red like i don't know but we're still going to give this a go because I know a lot of people want this to work and there's a lot of fans that want this, but I think what we're going to have to settle on is no matter what we do, this is just getting it as close as we can. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying you're going to walk away and this is going to be a killer of any kind, but we're just going to do what we can with this. <laughs> I just wanted to preface that. Cause like, I, okay. Before we get back in this, like, I want you to know I have a different version of this built with some different cards and I have it literally labeled probably doesn't work. <laughs> right. This was before I started. This is what I put together a couple days ago. I messed with this list several times, literally labeled it probably doesn't work. <laughs> like that's, that tells you where I am on this whole, like just guy and is it spells situation? Like I, so no, I just want to be like, fully transparent like no hate to the person who submitted this no hate to this deck list this is just after having spending thought energy on it and trying things over the last couple seasons still not sold on it i'll even open it up so you can see it because i'm going to recommend slick shot so off anyway so i'm probably going to get you close to this version because this is probably like the closest thing but i don't know the other tough part here about these lists realistically and here's the thing i don't think people consider when building these is that your individual creatures tend to be worse than opposing creatures or other threats, whether those are artifacts, enchantments, whatever. But your individual threats are not as good as their individual threats, and you have to get your spells off to make them threats. But then the trade-off to that is you end up having to play a pretty ch large chunk of spells to balance out your number of... to go against the number of creatures because you need spells to make them worth anything. So if you get too many spells or too many creatures, the deck also falters. You know what I mean? So that's tough. Uh, I have a video. Somebody, uh, Twick Yori, uh, Twicky Yori, Rory. Wow, that's weird to say. Twicky Rory, 07. Um, I actually have a video up today on YouTube with the Dragons list if you want to watch it. That went up at midnight last night. Uh, Dragon Spark Elemental is a neat card, but it's almost too slow for current stuff but i think you kind of have to play slick shot i think that's mandatory so i'm gonna put some of those in here uh, i'm gonna add a bunch of stuff first and then i'm gonna work backwards after putting a bunch of stuff in the list that i think we should probably have there's no like play with fires or draw spells in here and i think that's necessary also green can't be blocked if you committed a crime this turn whenever it deals combat damage or play. yeah this is way too slow i would definitely not play that uh, I tried Fuss and Bother in another deck. I was not impressed with it. I think you can play some other stuff there. Um, Faithful Mending, while neat, doesn't... It's not really what this deck wants to be doing. I think you need cheaper spells as a whole. And I don't know. Uh, what is it? What's that other spell? The blue spell? That, like, you 
draw a card and is it draw a card scry? Uh no. Oh, is it I mean, draw a card surveil, maybe? I don't know. Brain's not braining right now. This consider there was that. Okay, so I'm not crazy. All right, so we're putting a bunch of cards in. We're eventually gonna have to take some stuff out. Um yeah, it considers definitely the card. Um, Lila's good if you're casting multicolor spells. The problem is you can't just lean on multicolor spells. You have to have other things because you need stuff like Consider, Play With Fire, Slick Shot. You know, those are going to be the cards that are going to get you through everything else. Uh, slick Sequence makes sense. I mean, the problem is we're just going to end up with so few creatures, which is just a thing you have to do in these decks. And you're also trying to play Monastery Mentor and Lila. So, you, I mean, you can't even go Jaya here because you have to just be cheaper. Right? You, I mean, part of the benefit of this deck is you do get to skimp on lands. I would not be playing 25 lands in this type of deck. Like, you're trying to get to see more cards with your scrying effects, with your drawing effects. Getting to replay stuff with Lila. Like this is this is like the, the tension of these decks as we're going through this, and I'm trying to eliminate things. Is it's again, okay, I have to have enough things that I can force the issue, but then I also need enough things that can function and push all these cards. But now you have another layer with Lila of like, well, I also want at least a reasonable amount of multicolor spells, but we're not just not going to have that many. I mean, I guess we could have some others, but I just don't know where you find the space. Like, electrostatic infantry probably has to get cut here. Uh, that leaves us with, what, 18 creatures? All right. That's probably, like, you can maybe go down to, like, 16 or 17, but that's probably as low as you want to go in this list. And I even feel like you sort of want another monetary Swiss beer. Or monastery Swiss. Why did I say monetary? I wish he was making money, but monastery Swiss beer. Monastery mentor. I didn't even say it right the second time. My gosh, I stayed up way too late last night. <laughs> Brain is definitely not braining right now. Um, yeah, like I like Angel Fire Ignition, but does it really have a home here? And there's also like this weird tension, right, with Lila and Narset because. You're playing a thing, but then you get it for free with Lila, but then you are you have to, like, I guess you could play it. Lila will plot it. Then the next turn you attack, you could cast it before the attack so it's in the graveyard. Then Narset can use it. It's an interesting sequence, but I mean, I guess that's how it would work out. Um, Boy, this is tight. This is really, really tight. Right now, there's 29, 22, 14 as far as mana color. So we need blue, red, then blue, then white. Oh, yeah, we need way more multi lands. Like, that's the other thing about this deck, too. If you don't have the multi lands, this deck is going to struggle a whole lot because you need to be casting things on turn one, turn two, turn three. And then you need to be able to cast multiple spells on a turn. So. Playing all these things that come into play tapped, like the Tranquil Cove and whatever, while it may be a budget consideration, and I totally, totally get that, it really harms this deck significantly. Like, you can't afford for this to come into play tapped on turn three. You just can't if you're playing this type of deck. Like, you need to be plotting a slick shot and then playing, like, slick shot for free, then bow more and a spell or something or whatever to try to, like, maximize your damage. Or even playing Lila, then setting up like two or three spells the next turn, right? You, if you're not, you're just not doing what this deck is trying to do. So unfortunately, I would say the lands as a whole need a giant overhaul. Like you're just going to have to play all the lands that like the fast lands. I mean, I would literally just max the fast lands out. Like, I don't, you know... So, Wars, I think this statement's mostly true. He says it, it's the unfortunate truth, but lands are necessary investment if you want to play multicolor decks. I feel like if you're playing a mid-rangey or control deck, 
you can get by with some extra lands that come in and play tapped or surveil or gain life or do that sort of thing because your key spells are going to be turns four, turns five, turn six, right? But in this type of deck, you're trying to cast something every turn, basically, right? And then after turn three on, hopefully multiple things in a turn. Or if you want to try to get a crazy kill turn with the, uh, what's his name? With the slick shot, like you want to be able to cast, play with fire, consider slick sequence or whatever, like boom, 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 right? And get maximum damage out of your stuff. But you can't do that if you don't have the fast lands. So that's probably the holdup on this deck for a lot of people. But I mean, you might as well just max out all of the fast lands. I just can't see a reason or a way you get around having them. And then just cut all of these tap lands. I just don't think they're good enough. Even the deserts or whatever, I just don't think that's what these decks are trying to do right now. Uh, let's see, what does that leave? 12, 13, probably need some more pain lands. Because if you're losing the damage race, the sex probably losing anyway. I mean, it's just that's just the way it's designed. You're kind of in for a penny, in for a pound, as they say. All right, so what do we got here? That's uh, 4, 7, 11, 14, 18, 19. Uh, go down to one plane, so it's 20, 21. Man, can you get away with 22? I mean, we're at 23. I I think you could get by with 22 if we tried real hard. <laughs> like, if we believed in ourselves, like, maybe we could pull it off. Uh, I don't think we want the white-blue land to be the one. We want it to be a red-blue land. Oh, we already have those in there. Shivan Reef's already there. Uh, I'd probably just go, well, let's see, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven for how many whites? Eh, 14 spells. Yeah, I guess all right. I guess they can go back in there. Maybe something like this. I mean, now you're down to 22 lands. I might just be on a single Narset. Or even actually probably not. Probably just cut an Angel Fire Ignition. Maybe something like this is closer. So four play with fire, four slick shot, faithful mending. Uh, I feel like there's got to be something better we could do than faithful mending, but you know we're already forcing your budget on those lands. So you know I feel you. Uh, two bow more, four slick shot, slick sequence, four third path iconoclast, four lightning helix, three mentor, three lila, one angel fire ignition, two narset. And a bunch of lands. I think this is probably where you want to be. This is closer. It probably still needs tweaking. But this will get you closer than I think where you were. Honestly. But the lands the lands are going to be the biggest thing. I think this is going to be the biggest problem. Like you, This type of deck needs a fight. Honestly, I would argue in three colors, this deck doesn't even work really without the fast lands. Like being able to just cast all your stuff on time and quickly and not have to worry about, oh, well, I got a red red land and a blue land, but I need to cast a lightning helix to kill a thing on two so I can cast a three mana thing on my turn, right? Like this takes away those sequencing issues as well by having those. So yeah, probably, I mean, because if you look at this, like you need white, blue, you need red, blue, you need red, white. You need red, blue. You need red, white. You need red, white, blue, right? Like, you just got to have it. There's so many spell sequences that are color sequences that you just got to have early in here. But all right, that's enough of that. Thank you for submitting the deck. Uh, for those of you who just joined, if you'd like to submit your deck, you have a couple of ways. If you're on one of the platforms, you can post links, which I believe is Twitch and Facebook. You can put the links up. I will get them. Otherwise... You can join my Discord and go to... Oh, wow, wait. That's not what I want to post in there. Uh, you can join my Discord. Link's in description. or you can, And you can go to my uh, standard channel in the Discord and post your thing. And if we get to it, then we'll get to talk about it. 
I will post the link again so people have it, just in case. Because there's a lot of people who just showed up. Do, 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 do. And again, we're doing mostly standard decks. You can post other stuff, but the feedback may not be as good or accurate. Also, if you're posting a deck list, it's just already a known deck list. I'm going to look at it for like two minutes, say, congratulations, you're playing a good deck, and then we're going to move on, right? Uh, this is to help people that are trying something with new cards, trying stuff you don't see very often, maybe decks that have struggled that they haven't seen a good version of, any of that type of stuff. That's what we're trying to do today. Uh, am I not playing the decks? No, I'm helping people with their decks. I am not playing decks today. This is not one of those types of streams. This is a stream for the people. More than a stream for me. <laughs> uh, maybe down the road, if people want to make super chats or or whatever they call it, super thanks donations, or you want to like make a bits donation on Twitch or something, I'll play your decks or something. But uh, unfortunately, that's not what we're doing at this very moment. And I don't even know if that's interesting to y'all, to be honest. But if y'all were willing to do that, I would do it. Uh, because, partly, especially while we're just testing decks, uh, we're going to Catastrophe 427 next. We're going to look at one of your decks. Um, sometimes we're just playing test decks. I'm just going to be spending time I could be spending playing decks I would be making for content or decks I've already tested or something like that. So there is a... Not to make it so clinical and, and businessy, but there is an actual like monetary downside to that. Uh, it says, Fire Nogue says, appreciate you taking a look at the deck. Definitely understood what we're saying. Have been seeing that when I've been playing it in regards to the lands and single color spells. Cool. At least I'm not crazy. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? This is uh, from Catastrophe. This looks like an OTJ Roots. And it says whip. So I'm assuming it's work in progress is what we got going on here. So what do we have going on with this one? This is going to be interesting. So we have Lunark Veteran, Corrupted Conviction. So we can sacrifice some of these tokens to draw cards. Conscript to come back out of the graveyard. Miner. So if we are doing crimes, we can get a creature back. Verbal Belt Maverick, which was in a lot of these versions already. Same with the Aftermath Analyst. Bristly Bill which doesn't really commit a crime or, I mean, it doubles counters on things. Uh, Bartolome, which can sacrifice stuff and get bigger. Insidious Roots, Agatha Soul Cauldron, obviously removes creatures from the graveyard. Season of Renewal, which is pretty nice. You could return things, and that also triggers Honest Red Scene, which is actually not bad in a Roots deck because technically for every black and green mana you have, if you have one of these, you can kind of just keep cycling them, which is kind of funny. Well, actually, I guess you need three, because you need one in the graveyard to initially target, and then you can just kind of keep a cycle going. Uh, Tyvar, obviously good. Cosmic Rebirth, good. Mondrak, cute, but not necessary, I don't think. Uh, Besiege the Mirror. Yeah, I think this is... I was always I was with this list all the way up to the Cosmic Rebirth. And then here, I think we hit the point where we're going for style points more than efficiency. I don't think, yeah, I, I was with it for a second, but I think somewhere around the Mondrak, we started getting, we jumped out of the pail a little bit. I would rather play more things, like, I guess my first question is, is the white necessary? I built a version a while ago with white, don't get me wrong, I played Cosmic Rebirth and it was cool, but... Let's say we maximize Tyvar, we play a third Honest Rudsty, and we play another Season of Renewal. Can we just cut the white cards? And then we can just keep playing stuff out of our graveyard anyway. You know what I mean? Like, is that not just better? Also, Bristly Bill. I don't, I don't think Bill's necessary. But I'm kind of curious. Like, what could we do? Also, what are we criming with? Now that I'm thinking about it. Like, we don't have anything. I mean, I guess technically, Act of the Soul Cauldron could move stuff from the graveyard. That counts. Like, that's a crime. <laughs> like, that's a thing we could do. But we're not really criming with this deck. So I don't know how good this Forsaken Miner really is. Uh, go for Analysts, because that can just help fill our graveyard to get things. 
Another Honest Rudstein. Cut this other thing. Play a fourth Tyvar. Uh, how many lands are in here? Oh, God. That's why there's so many cards. There's 33 lands. What are we doing? We don't need that many. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let's at least cut all the white lands first. Like, get these out of here. That'd be a start. Um, mm, 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 whoop. Not those. Might want to keep those. Get rid of these. And these. And these. So how many lands do I need to add back in here? All right, so now we're down to 18. We probably need to add at least six back in. So let's go max on the Blooming Marsh. Uh, might as well max the Restless Cottage. Because this say... I have a tax to uh, create a food token, exit up one target from a graveyard. So you can move something from your graveyard to still target or to still activate your roots. So that's fine. Um, mortuary, I guess, because it surveils, can put stuff in your yard. So that's 16, 18, 20. Get rid of those planes. Uh, well, it's green, black, probably going to be close to an equal number. That's what I thought. So 20, 20, 22, 23, 24, something like this. All right. So let's just start getting things down to business here. Question we have to start asking is what new cards can we include? I don't think minor is the thing. I feel like minor is not the right card here. Conviction makes sense because we can draw the Rebel Belt, Maverick, I mean, you can play the vampire that because these lists were already playing the vampire. You could play out of the graveyard. Uh, the one that creates the the token. What is it called? You lose a life, and it makes the whatever. Oh my gosh! Oh wait, I could just do this. Nope, I'm thinking of a different card then. <laughs> oh, actually, I think it's just lose one. I think maybe just like who's on something like that. I don't know. But there is one you can play out of the graveyard. I'm 100% positive. But, oh, wait. I know why. Is it that? Yeah, Icar Drinker. It has lifelink. There you go. This guy. This guy's better. Let's not play the minor. Let's play this. And play another conscript. And then how many other creatures do we have here? We have 19. So whatever we play at this point probably needs to be a couple more creatures of some kind. Um, let's look at OTJ, though. And what can we play from the graveyard? So let's look at just the latest set. Um, when one or more tokens, that's if we were still playing white. And that could almost be a thing. Um, this is whenever you commit a crime. All right. Those are just the vampires, though. Tiny Bones is interesting, but you can only play cards from the opponent's graveyard. So that doesn't really help too much. Uh, the flyers here aren't great. I was looking to see if there was just something cool out of the graveyard we could do. I mean, there is the big 6-5 if you wanted to play some number of deserts. But then we step back into the idea of, like, could we be doing crimes then? Right? And then that could be something. I was just trying to see if, like, if, I mean, this guy, but you can't play it out of the graveyard. You just search for a thing. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. I thought there'd be a couple more things maybe we could play from the graveyard that would have uh, been of interest. I mean, get rocks cute because you can sacrifice one of your plants that you just made and turn <laughs> and draw some cards, which is kind of funny. Uh, Vraska just gives everything a death touch. Oh, no, you get to take something when your opponent's creature dies and turn it into a treasure. Uh, yeah, not much else. There's not a lot else going on here. I mean, more Corrupted conventions, Convictions just rounds out the deck, but we're not really playing any new cards in here. I think that's the disappointing part for me. It's like, I was thinking, what new cards are we going to add? But I feel there's got to be something for the roots deck that I'm just overlooking. Maybe it's a spell and not a creature. But I feel like there's got to be something. Um, oh, there is... What is that card? Something something Varmints? Hold on a second. Maybe that works in here? Not this guy. That doesn't seem good at all, really. 
I mean, I guess it's Axe Destroy and Artifact and Enchantment. But I was thinking this. You get X 2-1 green varmint creature tokens where X is the number of creatures in your graveyard. So if we'd flipped a bunch of stuff, then like maybe there's a thing. Um, are we taking deck suggestions? Yeah, if you have an idea, shoot. There's a three mana, there's a three mana black card that casts stuff from your graveyard from outlaws. All right, we can look for that. Uh, I remember that the big score cards are also standard legal. That's true. Maybe there's something I was thinking from that set. Totally forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, let's look at stuff. Somebody said there was a three mana thing. Let's see what that's about. That we can play stuff from the graveyard. Oh, Karek's cool if we were doing more criming. Um, Committed crime. There's this, but this doesn't do anything, really. Enters the battlefield, sacrifice a creature. Enters the battlefield. Yeah, I don't know what card we're, we're targeting here. Caravac's not bad, but we don't really have that much that targets the opponent's stuff. We just have Ag of the Soul Cauldron, we have a land that can do it. And that might be it. We don't really have much else here. Everything else kind of targets our own graveyard, so we don't get the real benefit of criming too much. And there's really no gold cards to add, no artifacts, but at this point you kind of need them to be creatures. I would probably, I mean, it is a little bit creature light, but technically you're kind of hoping to stick an Insidious Roots or a Tyvar and take advantage of having fewer creatures anyway. So I think it's fine. I'm just kind of surprised there's not much here to play. There's the Spree spell that gets back two creatures, amount of value up to four combined. That's true. There are a couple of things with Spree that are kind of neat. Oh, I need to remove the cost restrictor. Yeah, I mean, this also mills, which is cute. You could mill stuff and then just get stuff back to your hand. So, I mean, like, this kind of does what we want. It puts some stuff in the graveyard, and then you remove something from the graveyard. So that's kind of funny. Problem with this, though, is you really almost would never use the other two options. That's not true. Maybe occasionally you'd use the third option to protect your creatures four or greater from like a sweeper, but that'd probably be about it. Uh, but yeah, Lively Dirge is the one. Search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle. Or you could return two creatures with mana value four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Also worth considering. I think that's one we could... Uh, really mess with here but maybe this is probably just a tight list that's fine just does what it's supposed to do i personally i think i would want to have one less agatha soul cauldron and one more of something else i don't know what that i you know what i might even cut a soul cauldron to experiment with one of these two spree cards either this one to just return stuff to play and let you put a certain thing in the graveyard which, to be honest, could even... Well, let's see. Does this return enchantment or creature? Oh, you choose one or both. Yeah, so... Maybe you don't really even need this, honestly. I mean, at least this mills, and you get your option of putting a couple things in hand. Eh, I might try one just to try it, to see how helpful it is. Because you can also do it at instant speed to set stuff up, which is kind of a big deal, too. Because like being able to put a couple things in, then return a creature, and instant speed make an insidious roots and pump the rest of your tokens or whatever. Like, I think that could be kind of cool. But yeah, something like this. It looks basically like the old list looked, but we added a smuggler's surprise and we're playing three honest Rutstein. Otherwise, this is kind of the same thing. Five mana sorcery cost too much? Yeah, probably. Honestly. I don't think that's what this... I mean, once you get the roots going, technically anything's on the table because those could all be tapped for mana. But I don't know if that's really how this deck's trying to win. Like, you literally can just get your mana and then try to just do Rutstein tricks and just get into a cycle of three Rutsteins and then just keep getting those back over and over in some capacity and probably win that way too. Just keep making a bunch of tokens. 
So yeah, I don't know. There's a few different ways this deck can win, just in black green. And you're not really worried about milling stuff into the graveyard because you have stuff like Season of Renewal. You've got Honest Rudstein to return stuff. You got Tyvar to return stuff. So all reasonable ways to get stuff back and keep the deck going. So like, yeah, this is probably fine. But yeah, I'd give that a go. Orberg, Urborg possession is better, is better, or the Shigeki Sky Turtle combo. That's fair. Uh, Asa says, I'm trying to make a deck work with Fortune, Loyal Steed, Prototype Creature. Oh, no, no, no. You meant, oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant help give suggestions for people's decks. You can share deck lists and we will look at them. Uh, uh, you can post or go to the description, look for the Discord. You can go to our standard section in the Discord and post it there. Or if you're on, I believe, Twitch or Facebook, you can just post the uh, link directly. We're going to take a look at OK Scoops list, who looks like they're doing some criming. This will be our first crime list of the day. And I'm not going to lie, like, I still hate saying crime. Like, I, it bugs me for some reason. And I don't know why. I, it's it's a personal thing. It'll take me a while to get over, I'm sure. Is this, uh, what colors? What did we just load? Was it this? All right, cool. This looks like what we're doing. Mono black crimin. All right. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Okay. So this is for OK Scoop. OK Ice Scoop, I think, is your actual username. Uh, do, 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 do. Cut downs. Miners, which do make sense here for doing a bunch of crimin. Tiny Bones joins up, which is a guaranteed crime every time you play a legendary duder. Regular Tiny Bones, keep Cavern Bat, go for the throat. Vladimir. I mean, this. No insult. I mean, this is just mono black targeting crime. You just swap, swap the creatures to do more crimes. Like, what are you struggling with with this list? Would be my question. Because otherwise, I mean, this is just mono black, but you just swap the cards out for crime options, which isn't bad. No insult. Totally fine. I mean, it's just play the greatest hits that happen to crime. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's there's not a lot to change about this list. Like, bats are good. Carabex good. Lord Skater's good. Shieldred's good. Uh, just wish it was more consistent. Again, more specific, please. Like, what? where do you feel it is inconsistent? Is it because the spells are too expensive? Are we coming up short on mana? Are we not handling, I don't know, mono red? You know, something like that. Like, what are what are the issues we have? Because I think consistency, it's coming from something. Like, what is the thing we're not doing with this list? Though I don't think we need four Karavec. I think that's too many. I would probably drop a Karavec. It has issues with go-wide lists and control at times. Uh, that's going to be a thing for this. I mean, every deck's going to have some kind of weakness. That's probably going to be the weakness for this. Or something that cares about having stuff in their graveyard because Tiny Bones joins up is probably going to fill their graveyard, right? So those are going to be problems. But I think you can play more removal. You could play a Planeswalker or two if you wanted to. Like I said, you can cut a care back. I don't think you need four of those. I think two or three is probably plenty. Gissa is a good card. I don't know how many you particularly want. Uh, I don't know if this is even a 26 land deck. This might be a 25 land deck, personally. Um, I think you could cut a Gissa. You could cut a... Man, do we need five, four Field of Ruin? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Your deck's all black. I mean, it's not that hard to get to where you need. Um, hmm. Uh, still leaves two spaces. I mean, you could play another Go for the Throat. That'll help some of your problems. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Do you want something that destroys Planeswalkers against the control decks, maybe? I mean, there is always Hero's Downfall. Just an easy way to do it. Uh, looking to see if there's anything. I mean, technically, Shieldred, but we don't want to add another five-cost thing to the deck, I don't think. 
I mean, also just playing another Shieldred four is actually more than fine. Like the card does what you want it to do. Uh, nothing to really do with tokens or anything here. I mean, deep cavern bats are totally fine. Yeah, Triumph works well for that too. That's a good suggestion. I think you could go with that. And you'll have times you'll have cards you can discard anyway because you'll have like an extra tiny bone since it's legendary. You know, that sort of thing. But yeah, I think it's somewhere... Hmm. I'm looking at minor just thinking like, do we need a full set of four minor? Like, it's not bad. It's still a 2-2. Two -two. It just can't block. Vlad is fine. Conventuates, lifelink, and menace. We do target with one. Seven. We have a few different cards that targets the opponent's stuff. So that's fair. And Caravac will let you replay some stuff, obviously. I would even just say, I, I think two Liliana's probably just fine. I don't think we have to overthink this. I mean, I know you're playing mono black, like you probably don't want to play the same boring cards or whatever, but this is probably fine. I mean, then you have Liliana and Tiny Bone joins up to give you a little bit of discard anyway for those problematic matchups. And then you also have Bat, which is like pseudo discard. You know, you have Merrick as your only creature land, but that's fine. You also have Takanuma to get stuff out of the yard. Like, yeah, this is probably fine. I mean, there's really not a ton to do here because you're effectively saying, okay, I want to change. And this is nothing wrong, but just philosophically, you're basically just saying, I want to take away the normal parts of mono black being cards we're used to seeing, right? Where it's like Gix and Underdog and the, the Werewolf and whatever, right? And just exchanging them for things that particularly do more crime. Actually, Werewolf does crimes, actually. <laughs> and I like, said that out loud and went, wait a minute. Werewolf actually does crimes and it's just fine. So, I mean, Werewolf or Lord Skitter, take your pick. I mean, Lord Skitter goes wide and makes more tokens, but they don't block anyway. So you could probably swap Lord Skitter for just the Trespasser. And it kind of does the same thing. But you potentially get a 4-4 sometimes that could do more damage. So that's something else to consider, too. But either way, it's it's an option. But that's probably the only other change I would make. This is kind of just trying new cards and going a different direction. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But, you know, again, you're playing the Miner instead of the 1-1 Black creature that you can pay and grow or whatever, right? Like, it's basically the same deck. You just switch the function of it instead of just being mid rangey value to trying to get value out of targeting your opponent's things. So, yeah. So, there, it's not... Nothing wrong with it. Just a thought. Depending on which way you want to go. Like I said, Liliana could be... The two Liliana spots could be a bunch of other things if you wanted them to be. Truthfully. But, all right. That's that. Let's see who else we've got up next. Uh, am I missing anybody who had posted... Nobody put anything there, so we didn't miss that. Just making sure I'm not missing anybody. I got to go double check over on the X real quick. I can't even, I don't even feel right saying X. It's literally just Twitter. I'm sorry, y'all. And like, I know some people, like, I'm trying to be professional and call it X, but man, it just doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's weird. <laughs> like, it just, it's never going to feel right. Mm mm mm. All right, we have one that's Thunder Junction Artifacts is the title here. So let's see what this is all about. This will be a fun one from Moose Thompson. You know what, Moose? When I read your name, I feel like that's some type of storybook football player who was like this badass fullback or something once upon a time. <laughs> like just Moose Thompson leading the way, you know? Uh, okay, what do we got here? It's from the Red Green Show. I don't think I've ever watched that, actually. I've heard about it, but never watched it. All right, so Synthesizer, one of the new cards, is when it comes into play, you scry two. When another artifact or with mana value three or less enters the battlefield under your control, you create a zero, zero colorless construct that's plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Um, You know, again, I know it's 
restrictions on budget because it's mythic. But yeah, you might as well just have four of these. Or three or greater. Yeah, yeah, same thing. But either way, still should have four of these. <laughs> uh, if it's going to be part of the day, I mean, hell, the, like, they trigger off themselves, right? Three mana, three or greater. So not even greater than three. So like, yeah, if you play a second one, you just get a dude. And then after that, the next one gets you more dudes. Karn Silex, destroy each non-land permanent. I, uh, man, I do not like Silex in here because all of your stuff are permanent. Like, I think the question I would ask was, other than creatures, what is the thing you're most afraid or concerned about removing? Because if there aren't a bunch of like artifacts and enchantments that you're really terrified about removing, why are we not just playing a regular sweeper in here? Like, don't be wrong. I get that it's a three mana artifact and it does its thing or whatever. But why risk blowing up your board that you spent time setting up when you could just play, I don't know, any of the, the sweepers for, for white or even playing just like get lost or something like that just feels better than risking just getting rid of your board i don't that doesn't make me hell you even have unstable glyph bridge which kind of is a sweeper anyway you like i'd almost rather just play more glyph bridge than playing more silex because this ultimately still makes you an artifact like still can be a creature on the backside like you can still just do other things other than like, because because if you think about it, this is almost going to be the same amount of mana anyway, right? Because you play the Silex, it comes in and play tapped, and then you have to wait till next turn anyway to spend some amount of mana that's probably going to be, I'm assuming, four plus regardless. So it's like, could you have just played more Glyph Bridge anyway and just like removed everything? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know if Silex, I mean, admittedly, this is only targeting creatures. It's not going after enchantments or whatever. But if that's the concern, I would still rather just play Get Lost to Destroy Enchantments than I would risking my whole board. Because I'm trying to figure out like what scenarios exist where the opponent's going to have enchantments I need to get rid of, or maybe artifacts, that the game's going to be going significantly better for me by getting rid of all the stuff I've set up for the first five turns of the game or whatever. And they're just gonna not have anything. Like I don't, I don't know what that scenario looks like. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying like I'm having a hard time picturing how this is beneficial to me in that scenario. Yeah, like no Silex, and it doesn't even have to be Glyph Bridge. Like I said, it could be Get Lost or whatever, right? So it's targeted, so you can get Planeswalkers or whatever if you want to. Uh, Nexus will be coming. Makes sense in here because you're making tokens that are goblins that are copies of things. Portal to Phyrexia. I think we've kind of seen some versions of this. Uh, Shamil is probably fine. Transmutation font. Also cute. Kind of. Sacrifice three artifacts. Search your library for an artifact card. How much mana is in this list? It feels like... It need, oh, this feels like it needs way more than 23. Because these cards are your major players here. Your Thousand Moon Smithy, your Glyph Bridge, your all of these are good, right? Like, but you have to get this feels like this list has to get to five mana. Like, this is a list I would be trying to play 26 lands or something in. Because I feel like if you don't get there, it's gonna feel real bad. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't even know if I'd play Spyglass Siren in this deck. Like, this is just like a hanger-on type card. Your whole plan should be around something involving synthesizers and other related things, is what I feel like. I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess Siren does produce a map that you could use with, like, the Dusk Rose Reliquary early if you need to. So that's a real thing. But... I'm sort of feeling like I would want more Synthesizer, a max amount of Thran Spider, because it's a pseudo ramp card for this deck, and can help you search later. Like, obviously, Disruption Protocol is still fine. 
Yeah, I think we can clean this up a little bit. Uh, don't have, like, uh, this is tough. Because, like, you're also wanting to remove creatures at times with stuff like the Glyph Bridge. So, like, I don't even know if Automaton is the right card. Like, Spider at least makes sense. It can block stuff. It has reach. It makes a uh, token that you can use for mana. Even the Circuit Mender, it gains you life and it dies. You get a card, so you don't really care, you know. I'm just not sure if Automaton's the right card here. But we need something else to do. Actually, you know what? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, There's a two-mana artifact that adds white mana. What is that thing? This. Fabrication Foundry. We should be playing this instead of Automaton. And, like, this makes a lot more sense, <laughs> right? Play these things. So now we get more mana, and we can possibly replay stuff out of the graveyard as we need it. So that helps speed the deck up a bit. Go to... F can I not just add four synthesizers without crafting things? Why are you doing this to me, Arena? Well, anyway, we're going to pretend there's four synthesizers in the list at the moment. Uh, I would go up to another spider. Mondrek, mostly fine. I mean, it doubles your tokens, which isn't bad. Could just be playing more smithies as well instead of the Mondrak, which is also reasonable. Mm. Get rid of one transmutation font. Now, I'm already starting to feel a little bit better about this, the way it looks now. Um... I was trying to think if there's another artifact that makes... Hmm, let me clear the settings here. Let's see. Something that's an artifact creates token. Let's see what we get. I was just thinking if there's something else that could let us make an extra token or two. I mean, this is kind of funny. You never get to play this, but if you just want extra cards, you can draw two or more of the creatures. Get to draw a card. And then it's just a random uh, soldier creation engine, which is fun. Don't Mostly because you don't have a lot of places to put it. Uh, this is nothing. I mean, it's a vehicle. It doesn't really do anything for you. Uh, maybe not. Maybe just convince myself there was something else. Is What is this? Uh... Artifact creatures or vehicles. Yeah, it's probably not going to work for us. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I guess you could play another Mightstone Weakstone, because that's actually more removal, or let you draw cards. That's not bad. And again, we got to get more mana in here, too. So I think... What happens if we cut Mondrak? Still going to pretend as though there's two Simulacrum synthesizers more in the list. Uh, let's see. Meticulous Archive, Deserted Beach, Scene of the Crime, In your Battlefield, tap, tap for a colorless, tap thing, make a mana, draw a card. All right, that's fine. Draw a card later. I don't hate that. Um, could go another Anchorage, because it does produce another artifact token. And... I might just go, yeah, for Anchorage, probably. Skitter Beam is interesting. But yeah, you would need another color to take advantage of it. All right. Maybe this is closer. We shrunk the casting costs down a little bit, but then we also added in Foundry, so we get to ramp a little better. We added a fourth spider playing four synthesizers, went up on another disruption protocol, so we have another counter kept the thousand moons kept the unstable glyph bridge added a might stone weak stone so you get another removal card effectively to go with like the reliquary and kept the shamil nexus of becoming the two portals 
and the one transmutation font. Not a lot of creatures, but that's not really what this deck's trying to do. Like, these creatures are fine because they each leave something behind, effectively. You get two life, it can chump block, die, you get a card. This can die on sight. You ramped your mana to let you very likely play one of these five mana things on the next turn. And I think that's probably fine. But part of me does feel like there's got to be a build that gets to play more Thousand Moon Smithies. I don't know what that looks like, particularly just offhand. But it feels like maybe it means one less Shamil or something, whatever. But if you stick those, then things just look great anyway. So yeah, I would try working from something like this. And probably even minus an island plus a planes. So yeah, so four Dusk Rose Re Reliquary, four Fabrication Foundry, four Disruption Protocol, four Synthesizer, four Circuit Mender, four Spider, two Thousand Moon Smithy, two Glyph Bridge, two Might Stone Weak Stone, a Mutation Font, a Shamil, a Nexus, two Portal, and then lands are kind of quirky, but five Planes, three Island, and Ottawara, two Deserted Beach, two Meticulous Archive, four Reckless Anchorage, two Field of Ruin, two Merricks, four Scene of the Crime. I would be a bit concerned, though, because this is a lot of colorless lands. I mean, that's eight when you do need some early colored mana to be doing Fabrication Foundry Disruption Protocol. So that's something I would just keep in mind. You know, uh, something like that. Um, technically, this is open to anybody to submit. However, we may already be backed up. So we'll see what we get to. If there is a chance, I will let everybody know and you could submit uh, as well. But moving on to the next deck. Let's see what we got. This is for... Uh, by the way, Lions, I'm going to take this, but in the future, is it going to be the only one I'm taking? In the future, post it onto a deck site somewhere and then give me the link. And the reason is, I'm hoping this works, but too often people just post their list and for some reason it's wrong and then I can't load it into Arena and then I have to find stuff or whatever. It's probably going to be fine with the way it's submitted, but just something for advanced warning. Well, all right, cool. This submitted. I was going to say, about to say there's a problem, but... That has happened way too many times. And normally, I just skip over those if you don't follow the instructions. However, it's not too busy of a day, so we're going to roll with this. Uh, so, Lions, are you still here in one of the chats? I'm going to give you a second to catch up, because some of these do have about a 20-second delay. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next person. Because while these things are fun, you know, we want to uh, take care of people that are actually here to participate get feedback, all that good stuff. <clears throat> all right, it looks like Lions may no longer be here with us. RIP Lions. All right, looks like we're going to move on to Sergio, I think is next in line. So we're going to take a look at this list. See what we got here. Export this to Arena. And see what we can do. Oh, no, never mind. Lions, you just made it, friend. You just made it. <laughs> I was about to move on. All right. Congrats. You're here. Let's talk. Um, Wait, didn't I post a list like this already? Yeah, I literally did this already. I have a whole video about it. <laughs> like, I just realized. Like, this is Smuggler Surprise with Terror of the Peaks in... Galta, I mean, uh, Yargol and Multani. Like, I get what you're trying to do with a cool and Galta, then you get Galta and you get to put stuff in for free, but like, you don't have that many things to sacrifice early. So that plan's not really a real plan for this deck. You're almost never going to use a cool's other ability. Like, nothing to really make tokens. You really only have one two mana thing. So very likely you're going to be playing, you're probably not even going to play Recruiter because you don't want to waste that early. So, realistically, you're going to have either Harvester or Trailblazer early, most likely. I guess you have Epicure sometimes. But you still need three things to sacrifice to a cool. So, it's not likely you're going to sacrifice anything. And then you also still need 
other things, multiple things in your hand to take advantage of this. This is trying to double down on festival plus surprise. But uh, yeah, I would just hold on a second. I because I know I literally made this video. Uh, I don't have it loaded in here. I don't think. Let me bring it up from my uh, Moxfield. Do, 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 do. Where are we at here? We have, was it the Golgari Festival list? No. We were trying to smuggle some things in John. It's the Yargle Fling list. Here we go. I can just bring this up. And I have a whole video. You can even watch it in action. It went up last week or very beginning of this week. I don't know. A few days ago sometime. I put a lot of videos up. <laughs> All right. So. This list is basically what I would do. You get all your mana, so you can hard cast these things if necessary. I did play Goldvein Hydra, but you could swap those out for um, Storm the Festival if you wanted to. And give you more options of getting these other things in play. But this way, you can smuggle a surprise almost always. You can use Bramble Familiar to go find one of your bigger creatures if you need to. You can just use your mana if you get nothing else. Just play a really big gold vein hydra, and like this was this was mostly fine. Like, is it cute to have the stuff with like a coal and Galta, whatever? Like, yes, absolutely. But the reality is, you just don't get to hit those that often. So, I would probably just play something like this. Like, could you make it work? Like you're saying, you want to add Gleeful Demolition to the other list, like possibly but i feel like the whole list starts to become something different because then you're making it about a cool which is fine if you want it to be in a cool list but then we also need more artifacts right because the only artifacts we're going to have is from six cards right because nothing else in here even creates an artifact so if you were to get the uh gleeful demolition and you don't stick one of these, you don't even have a way to make extra bodies. So, like, now you just... I would call it a dead card. Technically, you can use it to kill an opponent's artifact. But, basically, it's a dead card for the most part, right? So, I don't think that part of the strategy really works. Even here, something like Spelunking, that just needs to be another creature, another mana thing, something else. Because you need to be able to cast all of these with regularity. I mean, you're also spelunking with just 24 lands, so there's not even a real high percentage chance that you're even going to draw an extra land at that point, necessarily. So you'd want to be playing probably 26 or 27 land in spelunking piles, minimum, maybe even 28. To increase, you get it, you get to ramp up, get to take advantage of that, and or have some number of lands that are also, like, coming into play tap, doing something else, but... You also have to be careful because if you don't have Spelunking, you don't want all these lands coming into play tap because you literally need all your mana on turn four, turn five, turn six, right? We're doing big things on each of these turns. You don't want a lot of tapped land. And this is, feels like a lot of tapped lands, right? These four surveil, so they have to be tapped. Blooming March after turn three is going to be coming into play tapped. This also comes in play tapped. This is like 12 to 16 lands or possibly up to 20 after turn three that are going to come into play tapped. That's going to really stifle what this deck is able to do. And putting stuff in the graveyard, while nice, because you have Smuggler Surprise, doesn't do a whole lot if you're going to need those lands to be untapped to use Smuggler Surprise with the extra cost anyway. You know what I mean? So, like, it can help set those things up, but ultimately it's not going to get you where you want to go. So... I would say if you want to do that. The other problem you have right now, too, is Storm the Festival only really has two good targets. Terror of the Peaks and Akul. Doesn't really do you much to... Like, you could get Recruiter, but that's not often what you want to do. Like, I guess if your opponent's already low and they just don't leave any blockers, then cool, getting a Terror plus Recruiter would do a thing. But generally, those aren't the things you want to hit, right? You want to be able to hit your upper end cards. And you don't have much at four and five that are worth hitting with Storm the Festival since it has the five cost restriction. Because, like, if you see Multani and you see Galta and you have to just ship them to the bottom of the library, that's going to feel real bad a lot, you know? So I would almost just have more mana things 
to try to increase the odds that I could even just cast those and get the advantage of them. That's why on my list, I was playing stuff like Bramble Familiar. So even if I do get my lands, I could use Bramble Familiar straight up and see if I can just find like a Yargle or whatever it was and get it for free. But yeah, I I like the process of this deck and the, the ideas because obviously, you know, I even made something similar, but we're trying to do too much. You know, we're trying to make artifacts that aren't really contributing. We have a recruiter, I guess, to sometimes hit it with a Galter or something, you know, to, to get an instant speed kill, which is kind of cool. But then we have a cool that's trying to play stuff for free, but we don't have enough early creatures to take advantage of a cool. We have Spelunking, but not enough lands. There's just a lot of parts fighting each other in this list. I almost feel like if you took any, like we could almost break this into four parts, right? This could be an early creature list that is using artifacts and um, what's it called? The, the Gleeful Demolition and a cool and doing some stuff that way. We could be playing a list that's all about Terror of the Peaks and Yargle, and then maybe you're playing the Vampire that can fling stuff or whatever, right? You can turn it into that. We could turn this into a ramping Galta list with some big fatties that are doing stuff. Or we could build a list that's trying to ramp with Spelunking and maybe some deserts and other things or whatever. But it's almost like we have parts of four decks that are fighting each other. Because my concern with this would be, you know, let's say you get something like a hand that's Terror of the Peak, Storm the Festival, Blood Tithe Harvester, Spelunking, and Three Land. Like, does that hand really do anything? Right? Like, we hope, assuming we have the right colors, right? That's another concern. But let's assume we have the right colors. You play a turn two Harvester. You play a Spelunking on three. Hopefully, we draw a land or have a land we could put into play. And then still have to draw a land to do anything with the rest of our hand. Hopefully, get to cast the Terror. And it survives. And then we hope we draw another land <laughs> untapped so we can play the Storm the Festival, right? It's like, and, and we're hoping that even works. I, I think that's the problem. Like, it's just the way this is built, I can see too many hands that are just fighting each other. Like, too many that just don't go together. Or you just get a cool and you just fight. You know what I mean? You go turn two creature, turn three creature, play a cool, draw a card, just fight with a 5-5, five five, right? Like, sometimes that's that's enough, too. But yeah, I think that would be my thing. I, I don't think I could make changes to this list without just turning it into a whole different pile of cards. So what I'm going to say to this is do what you can with that feedback. Decide what direction you want to go. And then if you want, bring it back to the Discord and the Dragon Brew to help you like sort it out a little bit. Because like there's a there's a lot going on here. And I'd almost have to turn it into something else to make it work. And I don't know which part of these you find the most interesting or the most important or whatever. And I don't I don't want to make your list into something I want. I want to try to help make it better to be the thing you want. So yeah, I would I would just say go sit with that a little bit, figure out what direction you want, and uh, we can talk about it at a future time. But, all right, I'm gonna go back in. Uh, it's now gonna be Sergio's turn. Uh, Wanderer, I need you to post me the link to your actual deck list where it goes, other than just posting the list in the Discord. I'm okay with that when we're not doing live streams, but I want to minimize the number of issues on live streams. But for now, it is Sergio's turn. So we're going to take a look at this and see what we can do. See what we got here. We are loading up. What did we load? What did we load? It is a five color deck, or so it says. This is just a super friends thing. I mean, sure. I mean, it's just a super friends deck, right? I mean, like, am I missing something? Uh, the only thing really I would say is you probably want some early mana cards, you know, like iron crags or something like that. Cause otherwise 
you're going to run into some problems really casting stuff. You only have one three mana thing, and then everything house happens at four, though you do have Trumpeting Carnosaur, which does technically give you something to do early. I mean, this can help you go find a land. So hopefully you don't get completely wrecked. It just goes finds basics, though, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's better than nothing. You still got to do what you got to do. And I understand why we're doing it. We do have Trumpeting Carnosaur and Shamil. You're trying to just hit your money cards for the most part. Uh, don't disagree with that. I mean, got to play a lot of tap lands because you're also trying to make use of Leyline Binding. I mean, it's fine. I just think it's just going to be slow and clunky. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with being an older concept. I just think it's doing what it's doing. I don't even know. If, like, I get why all will be ones in here, obviously, because everything's getting the tokens or whatever. I don't know how good or bad that is. <laughs> uh, but it's fine I mean sometimes you just gotta play it early hope it lives, play a planeswalker, pick off a creature maybe make a creature token uh, I do like Ashiok I might consider something though like a Soren because it's a mana less and it can make a life linker which, or a blocker, either way you want to look at it but that's kind of what you need you probably need more Wandering Emperor. Because, I mean, you're going to be on the defensive end of so many games from the get-go. So, like, while some of the stuff is cool, I think we're really trying to play, like, hey, we got to build up. We got to gain some life. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. Mirror Crab is cool. Make your opponent pay three more for stuff. Uh, seems like an Ichermore Gauntlet might be better than an Albi one. That is kind of an interesting thing. I tried that card out in a few lists a while back. Uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about. But this gives everything the option to just pay zero, or uh, plus zero, and then you proliferate. But then you can minus 12 to take an extra turn. And it just adds that to all of your Planeswalkers. Which is kind of cool in the sense that, like, if you have three or four Planeswalkers, you're not really doing much. You're like, okay, I'm going to proliferate, proliferate, proliferate. And then now everybody can do their ultimate or maybe even, you know, get to where you're taking extra turns. Uh, if you cast a non-creature spell, you choose a counter on target permanent. You put an extra counter on something. So it's like an extra proliferate for, for one card. But, yeah, I, I think this is mostly fine. I would... If there's a concern, I would say something like Shamil's probably have to be reduced. Because the ultimate thing is, I think you just got to get the cost down. Because there's just a lot of situations in here where you're just not... I'm trying to think of the best way to word this. Like, you're going to be restricted to playing one spell a turn a lot of the time already. And this does help getting you an extra one, but it's also six mana. And we're not playing any of the traditional sweepers, so we're relying on individual cards to get the work done, right? Because we can bounce stuff with Sky Turtle. We can counter something with Crab. We can maybe kill something with Carnosaur. And we have Leyline Binding. So we're hoping these all do their job. Until, like, Eternal Wanderer shows up. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't hate Horn Lock Whale. I, I just think this feels like a list I would have to play with a lot to see how much I value each of these cards. Like, Ashiok in theory is cool. But how often are we going to be growing these counters? Right? We're other than just with Ashiok themselves. Right? I don't know if that's the card. I mean, it does make two blockers, so it's not nothing, you know, for five mana. But I'm just looking at ways like we could skimp down to get more defense in here. Yeah, no, I get that these things are combos, but I'm also getting, like, how do we survive to that combo? You know, like, that's the thing. And then if we get either of these without the other one, like, is Ashiok great with Tamio, Or is Teferi good with Quintorius? Like, I don't know these answers. I'm, I'm just spitballing some things here. And then the question I want to ask is, do we even need green in the deck? 
Now, don't get me wrong. Green does give us herd migration. We get a little bit of life off of it and get Sky Turtle. But if we wanted to play stuff like Horned Lock Whale, more Wandering Emperors, you know, like, do we need green at all? Because I feel like mostly green is bringing herd migration to the table. But we're also just playing all the multi lands anyway. So it's just like we get it just because and it doesn't hurt anything. Also, I would say pretty land light at 25 land. This is another one that I think could be 26, 27, 28 land because technically all your stuff starts at three and you need a bunch of different, not only do you need different colors, you need double colors of stuff. You know, you've got double blue, double black, you know, and then you have multicolors, right? Of red, white, double red, blue, white, green, blue, double white, technically double black, but you can pay life for that. You know, double red, like there's, there's a lot happening here. Yeah, I this is one I would have to play to mess around with some more. But I'm just trying to think about like current games I've played so far this season, like what I would prioritize. But I think I would rather have while Ashiok is neat. I mean, the problem I guess the other problem too is you can't even really take advantage of Soren in here because you make the two three. And you can plus them, but then you're almost never taking the card because everything costs like five mana plus, right? You don't want to ding yourself for five. So that doesn't really work either. Yeah, man. I'm probably cutting all will be one for just another Wandering Emperor. If I'm being real. Like, it's cute. I get what it's trying to do. I don't hate it. But I'm just more concerned with the defense being able to set up the late turns. And, and the worst part about this is, like, you're all defense. Like, if they get rid of your first early Planeswalker or something, that could be bad news, right? But you still have to take that chance. Probably cutting a Shamil, keeping two. Oh, man. Let's see. Where else do we go from here? We have already have four Leyline Bindings. We already have four Herd Migration. Crab is fine if i don't know if we want a third crab or fourth crab i mean or do we just want a 26 land i think i want a 26 land uh what colors are we prioritizing here blue i mean they're all kind of across the place oh so white then blue and green and i mean you already have the sparse headquarter already maxed so either a white green or a white blue one we only have one thing that needs double green, though you need green early. Ugh. That's tough. I might still plus the Rafine's Tower. Something like this. Only some minor changes, because, I mean, again, the deck's trying to lean hard on just being super planeswalkery. Uh, would I add Broker as Ascendancy, or is it being too cute? I Actually, that's an interesting card, because I don't think it's being too cute for what the deck's trying to do. But I don't know if you can take a turn off to cast it, if that makes sense, right? I think on turn three, or up until turn four, realistically, you need to be searching for land. You need to be killing stuff with Carnosaur, getting rid of something with the Ley Line Binding, right? There's not going to be a lot of good opportunity to take a turn off to play the Ascendancy and then start playing your Planeswalkers. So I would rather just load up on more defense and then just let the Planeswalkers do what the Planeswalkers are going to do, I think. Would probably be better. Um, I'm looking at this Teferi 4, though, and I'm trying to decide how important that card is. Because it does help you search for answers or whatever, which is kind of nice. But I also, like, realistically, I think I'm wanting to cut a 5-mana Planeswalker here to play another... Wandering Emperor, I think is the real problem. So I think realistically, I'm probably just cutting an Ashiok playing another Wandering Emperor. Because I'm just worried about getting the casting cost down and making this more functional. And we already added another land that produces white, so I'm kind of okay with that. I I think this is closer to what I would do. So this still leaves you with a couple of plays early between 
herd migration and sky turtle to just buy you some time, some life, get some lands. You have a few turn three plays that could include ley lining something, using a carnosaur on a thing, or countering something with a mirror shell crab, which you could also possibly get back later with sky turtles or whatever. And then you can start rolling into planeswalkers, right? Whether that's a cheap Tamiyo or a Wandering Emperor or a Teferi or a Ren and Realm Breaker and try to start taking advantage of things from there. I think that's probably a little bit cleaner. Not a lot of changes, just reducing the casting cost of the deck a little bit, making sure your defenses are kind of shored up some, making sure you can buy time. We added another land to bring this up to 26. Again, though, I think this could be a 27 or 28 land deck. I don't think it's unreal to say, like, because this is a deck where you actually really want to hit even five or six mana, not even just four. Four is fine. It lets you function, but you really want to be getting to five or six. So if you ended up having some issues and mana was was being a problematic issue for you, I would probably ultimately end up cutting Ren and Realm Breaker. And try to find space for another land. Because, like, it's the only thing you're really playing on three early. Not to say that it's a bad card or anything. But I would probably be cutting that. As the others seem more beneficial to the overall game plan. Of either helping you set up something. Making creature tokens. Helping you gain life. Removing a creature. You know, that sort of thing. I think they're they're doing all those other things for you. Which is better. And then you can probably build up from there. So, probably something like this. I mean, we are playing Vanquish of Hoarders are like one sweeper, but, you know, that's fine. <laughs> like, it still gets... Any of the sweepers are acceptable. You can possibly get to play this for like two or three mana against the uh, Boros Tokens deck, so don't hate it. But yeah, something like this is probably where we're looking to be. Uh, all right. Next up, what do we got? Uh, we still have a little bit of time here. Let's see who we've got queued up. Um... Mm-mm-mm-mm. Uh, Ankh, next up. List posted over NTG Goldfish. I will snag that. Do, do, do. Copy that. And then let's see what we got. It loaded. And another Jun list? Is that, oh no, this is, yeah, 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 oh wait. Yeah, okay. This is technically a dragon deck. So it's like a four color list. All right. Um, Cool. I did a black red dragon deck. This is one that's got some green in it. So if you like dragons, here's more dragons. All right. First things first. I don't think this is a stinger back terror list. I don't think we're going to be emptying our hand nearly fast enough since we're trying to ramp up and also play a bunch of things that cost five plus with storm, the festival with gold vein Hydra. Not really what we're looking to do. So I'm probably cutting the stinger back terrors right off the bat. Uh, I like Gwyneth, I like Outcasts, I like Ruby. Armor scrap, but like, the tough thing here is I think I get caught deciding if I want Scrap Gorger or if I want the Bramble Familiar. And I'll bring that up too. But mostly because late game Bramble Familiar can allow me to get some of these other cards, right? Where I'm just like, oh, I just drew another mana creature. It's like, but I could possibly turn this into a five or six power thing or whatever, right? But the other side of that is, if there are a lot of graveyard things being played or whatever, then Scrap Gorge is actually really good. Obviously, it has other uses. So I think that's like a personal choice. In this type of build, I'm probably prioritizing the Bramble Familiar and hoping to have a late game play or outrace the opponent or whatever by having the, the more consistent uh, mana, realistically. Uh, Capricious Hellraiser. This is interesting, but I don't like it because it's also non-creature, non-land cards from the graveyard. And... You have some issues because, like, Smuggler Surprise, like, are you going to have the mana available? I don't even actually know, because Smuggler Surprise, when you cast it, you have to pay the extra cost or whatever. So, um, yeah, most of this deck is creatures. Yeah, 27, as a matter of fact. So, 
Capricious Hellraiser can't even take advantage of literally the bulk of the deck. I mean, it's creatures and lands, right? So we probably need other dragons. This ain't going to cut it. So here's what I would think. Let's cut those. Let's play another Smuggler Surprise. Let's add these duders in to give us some more mana. Then we have Gwenna, and now we should be able to cast every dragon we draw. I think we can play another Trailblazer. And then let's go look and just see what creature type dragon is bringing to the table. At Sushi, I like because we get access to different cards there. There's also Bone Horde Dracosaur, which is great. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I was looking to see, like, there's some other quirky ones like this thing. It costs six, but you get to ping your opponents and stuff. If you bargain, it can ha it has haste. So it's like, eh, some fun stuff going on there. Not sure if it's the one we need. Tyrant of the Ridge is a four or five. Deals four damage when it comes into play. Has some value. You would think, though, that there would be some other, like, just really high power dragons, but there's really not that many. I mean, we could play Zia Tora. Zia Tora is still legit, right? Comes into play with the terror, deals six, and then you fling the terror for five more. Like, that's real. <laughs> right? Like, that's a thing we could do. Uh, I don't like Maniform Hellkite because, again, we don't have any spells. I mean, like, we have some spells, but realistically, we're not a spell deck to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Like our spells, we only really want to play either defensively or when we're going to think we can hit something to end the game, right? You either want to sit on your charm so you never want to cast it because you either want to fight something or destroy something, right? Or you want to use Smuggler Surprise and Storm the Festival when you can just play your big thing. So I don't hate either of those. Rivers is neat, but. The thing I notice about Rivers, even in my list I posted today, is the ability to cast a dragon is actually not that exciting compared to the ability to play the dragons out of the graveyard. So I don't even know if I need to hit it early, realistically. Like on three, I'm almost rather want to cast Gwenna or Outcaster, or at least set up with uh, the plot so I could pay, play like a six mana thing or whatever on a following turn, right? Or five mana thing, I guess. But I think that's kind of the goal here, what I'd be looking at with these cards. So I could see cutting a Rivas and being totally fine. Uh, how many lands do we have in here? We have 22. Wow, that is a small number for what you're trying to do. I was wondering how we got so many cards into this pile. Wow, that explains a lot. Yeah, that's that's not going to cut it at all. <laughs> like we added an extra mana creature and I was still like, how are we going to do this? Like, oh yeah, that's crazy. Uh, Dragon Kami Reborn, I, I do not like. Uh, you're talking about, wait, this thing, wait, Dragon Kami Reborn. Oh, you're talking about like the five color enchantment? This thing, the Kami War? Oh no, this thing. Oh yeah, I've never liked this card. Like, I, I think the problem with this is it just takes too long to set up. I think was always my issue. Like, it's cool that you might eventually get something for free when, like, the egg hatches or whatever. But, eh. It just never was... It just feels like it's so much work to possibly get a reasonable outcome. And I'm just like, it just hasn't ever worked out for me. It's a cool card conceptually, and I like the story it's trying to tell, and it's like card design. But with the other things we can do on three mana, I'm almost never going to want to cast this. Right? If I can cast Gwenna to set up a Zia Tora or a Rith or whatever, or get a Trailblazer to get me the extra mana so I could play a Terror and draw a card, like I'm getting guaranteed actions out of my cards versus this, where I'm like, I'll play it. Maybe I get a thing and hope it's not a land or something, you know, like eh, it's cool. Maybe I get it for free. Maybe I don't. So, yeah, just too much unknown for me, unfortunately. And it's not helping build your board either. So against these like mono red, the Boros tokens, mono white aggro, whatever, 
you're just falling behind early and you're still not going to realize the benefits of this card. Granted, you do get to gain two life or whatever, but like you're not really gaining the benefit of the card until way later. Uh, Invasion of Tarkir is realistic. Kind of just depends on how many dragons we end up playing or think is worth it. I think issue one, though, is we got to get more lands into this deck. That's the biggest problem. The other is, now that I'm looking at it, Storm the Festival only really has two good hits here, right? Either Terror of the Peaks or Rift. Everything else is kind of small and inconsequential, unless maybe you get a Trailblazer and you get a card. Like, you could Terror, Outcaster, deal four, draw a card. That's kind of cool, something like that. But Zeotor costs six. You don't even want to hit a Gold Vein Hydra because it does nothing. Um, I'm actually willing to say we don't even want Gold Vein Hydra in this list. And mostly because... We can't use mana from Rivers to cast it. We don't want to hit it off of a Smuggler Surprise or a Storm the Festival. So it does nothing there. Like, it's a good late game card just to have. But outside of that, that's kind of like the most I could say for it. It's not really doing much else. So if we cut a Storm the Festival, because we already have like Smuggler Surprise for six mana... Roughly the same cost if you're trying to get guaranteed things from your hands into play. But later, you can also like flip stuff in the graveyard, return some things, blah, 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 do all that stuff. And this does work as a way to just protect your creatures. I think that's something people forget sometimes, but just for two mana, if they go to target your Terror of the Peaks or something, you can be like, all right, cool. I'm just going to pay two mana and keep it alive. Like, that is a real thing. Let's find room for a couple of lands, though. Uh, Festering Gulch, not necessary. I think we're good. we're back to the same thing of trying to play all these tap lands. We are this is not a tap land deck. You want to be casting things when you get your mana every time. Turn two, you want to be playing one of these mana creatures. Turn three, you want to be playing Gwenna or casting or plotting an outcast trailblazer. Possibly Rivers, depending on what your hand looks like, right? Turn four or five plus, you want to be playing Terror or Rith or whatever, right? You don't want these lands coming into play tapped. While I do like the fact that they deal damage, if we don't have stuff that cares about crime, we don't have stuff that cares about deserts, these are probably low on my list of priorities to play, unless they're like, if this was, let's say, just red-green, and they were going to be the 14, 15, 16 red-green land I'm playing, then sure, right? You're just playing it because you want the multi-lands and there's no other options. You put them in there. And at least you're getting some incre incremental damage. But I don't think we want them in this particular list. I think we start with the fast lands. And we go from there. Just to make sure you're hitting your stuff early that you're trying to cast. Uh, Maxicopoline Gorge. I don't know if we really want Black Cleave Cliffs here because we only really have two cards that care about black mana. And we already have Blooming Marsh. Though Bramble Familiar can't cast those. Gwenna can cast them. Uh, I guess we need a couple. Don't love it, but, yeah, you know. Cost of doing business, I guess. We'll play one or two. Um, Carplusion Forest, play a couple of Rockfall Veil. Vale. What is how many lands did I give us? I probably put too many now. Now we're at 28. So definitely can trim some here. Uh, let's see. Cut a red. So that gets us down to 26. We could probably get by on 25, I would think. And this still gives us nine black sources plus Gwenna. And technically Trailblazer can also produce a black if we need it. So I think that's fine. Plus Zeotor is a turn six thing. So I don't think we have to go too hard on the black mana. Uh, no, that's fine. I mean, if you don't have them, you don't have them. Play what you can. But I would still say play fewer tap lands. I would just squeeze for more basics at that point than I would tap lands. Um, so now we have two extra spaces we could do some stuff with. I would consider playing at Sushi 
I think that's a reasonable card because worst case scenario, it dies and you get your choice of either getting more cards or more treasure to help your deck out. It's also what this deck I think is missing is four mana cost things. And the reason I say that is if you already have Bramble Familiar and Ruby, there's a chance you're just not the best thing you're doing on three is a three mana thing and not a four mana thing. So I think by playing at Sushi, you at least open that door a little bit to be able to get ahead on board, possibly. And this, like I said, has upside if it does die, which is always nice. You're at least getting a little something. But maybe this, you still got 26 cards, 29 spells, three of which are charms. So you really only have, I mean, nine spells. So you have six between Smugglers, Surprise, and Storm the Festival, which are good comeback cards. Uh, over Decadent Dragon, probably so. Uh, and I think at Sushi over Decadent is a real discussion, but I think right now there's enough removal cards, even in, like, I look at it like this. Against Boros Aggro, I'd probably rather have Terror of the Peaks, right? They both block the same stuff. This, at Sushi, possibly, I guess they both trample, so that's fine. But what I do like about this is, if they just play, like, their case and kill our creature, now we can maybe get treasure and set up a big storm the festival, right? Or, if we already have other mana in our hand, okay, cool, let's get access to a couple of cards, so maybe we find other creatures we can block with or something, right? I like that option more than just taking a turn off to look at their deck take a couple of small things that probably aren't going to matter to us, and then just playing a 4-4. You know, I think it's the biggest thing. Or against Mono Black or whatever else, where they're just outright killing a creature, or they hit it with a Get Lost or whatever, you're always getting something. So I think that's the reason I'm favoring at Sushi. But if you want to play Decadent and Dragon, don't have a problem with it. Just be aware that that's now an additional black mana you're going to need to use that side of it. Because you can't use uh, Gwenna to cast spells. You can only use it to cast creatures. So that would also change your mana up a little bit too. So just something else to think about there. But this feels cleaner. And the mana feels more... Like you have more mana to begin with. So I feel like you'll hit your stuff more often. We're not going too overboard on Storm the Festival. Because we just don't have a ton of hits. Though so Atsushi does add at least a couple more quality hits for you. You now have Zeotora, which gives you a way to fling some stuff, also generate treasure to open up a smuggler surprise or whatever. Which, here's an interesting thing to think about in this deck with Zeotora. Right? You could have turns where you play Zeotora. Maybe you've attacked with Terror or Rith or whatever the case is, right? End of turn, you could get five more damage out of that. And then you're producing five treasure, which could unlock Smuggler's Surprise to do something during your opponent's turn. Because, right, you have whatever mana you already had from casting Zeotora the turn previous or whatever. You now have the five extra treasure. Like, you could try to go for a win digging for, like, something off the top of your library. Maybe you get a, a backup Terror of the Peaks in hand, something like that. So, no, just saying there's other options of things you could do with that extra mana that could be useful. But now you're drawing cards from a full set of Trailblazers. You have Gwena that makes it easier to cast some things. It's like things are unlocked a little bit here, I think, which are which are kind of nice. So just some things to think about. But this is probably closer to something I would try. It's some fast mana, some ways to cast all your stuff more consistently, some pretty resilient creatures, more dragons with the upside, and then you still have Smuggler Surprise and Storm of the Festival to try to just pull surprise wins sometimes. So yeah, something like this is probably where I would go. Uh, okay, going back in. That was Ankh. That brings us to The Wanderer. So let's take a look at what you've got going on. Also posted a list over on Goldfish. Uh, I'm not going to look at sideboards. I'm just going to talk about the main deck here. What do we got? We loaded up. What did we load up? Deck number five. A blue-black deck. Okay. 
Also, thanks for all of you that are hanging out here, like uh, on each platform. There's a lot of y'all here kind of conversing from Twitch. There's several of y'all even hanging out on Facebook that have come through. And uh, a lot of people on Twitter that are also watching. So always surprised where people are coming from on these streams. So thank you. Also, of course, those of you over on the YouTube. By the way, if y'all appreciate these types of streams and you're learning anything or whatever, Whatever platform you're on, give me a like, a follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, also, if you're on YouTube and you're a channel member, I do put out periodic like surveys and stuff for what we're going to make for content that only goes to channel members. I also have been trying to do about a video every four to six weeks that goes just to channel members as well. So there's like some other benefits. And then you get cool emotes and stuff you can use uh, in the chats and whatnot. Uh, Mikkel says... I enjoy hearing your thoughts on deck builds and learning something new. That's the biggest thing about this is like, even if we're not making decks perfect, right? And the metagame shifts anyway. Like the idea is to help people just understand why we put some cards in list or what some concepts are as to why things work or don't. You know, even a couple of times today, we had to talk about different mana situations, like why some decks can get away with playing more tap lands and some decks can't, right? Some absolutely want next to none some can play a few some are playing the long game and you can have like eight or ten tap lands and it doesn't affect anything right but it really depends on the deck build and what you expect each turn to look like and what spells do you have that do cost one or two or whatever so you can still do things on those downturns where you have those tap lands i think that's something people don't necessarily think about a lot of times in deck building and they're wondering like why they're struggling with casting their spells or their decks inconsistent. And sometimes that's just, it's that simple, right? Just the easiest thing sometimes. Okay, so getting into this list, we have Gnawing Vermin, which, okay, I thought this was going to be a discard thing at first, but I don't think this is a discard list. What are we doing? All right, so we got Cut Down, Gnawing Vermin, Falaji Archaeologist, which is putting stuff milling ourselves to get a thing, and we have Cruel Somnophage that's putting stuff in our graveyard. We have Bat, which is just generally good. Go for the Throat, which is generally good. Undead Butler to put stuff in our graveyard. Braids, which lets us sack some things. Harvester of Misery, which is a 5-4. Hollow Marauder. Enters the battlefield, any number of target opponents discard a card. For each of those opponents who didn't, discard a card with mana four or greater. You get to draw. Um, hmm. Hmm. Man, I... Oh, boy. I feel like I have a lot of thoughts right now. <laughs> and I really need to get my thoughts together so I can I can help kind of put this together. But I guess my first thought is that Verminar is okay, and I guess we're going to use it as a self-mill thing. Not super excited about the card, but it has a purpose and it's doing its thing. That's fine. Undead Butler also falls in the fine category. I don't hate Harvester of Misery just because you can take out multiple other things and your stuff that's dying you don't care that much about except for maybe Deep Cavern Bat. So, again, kind of okay with it. It sort of checks the box and I don't I don't think there's, a, there's an issue there. The one I'm struggling with here is... Hollow Marauder. Now, it gets one less for each creature in your graveyard. And we're playing a solid number of creatures, right? There's 29, so, like, there's likely to be, let's assume, between, like, Somnophage and the Archaeologist, whatever, doing their thing. You've got, like, at least four things in your graveyard. So, like, this thing's realistically going to cost three or less to cast for a 4-2. Your opponent discards a card. There's some value there. And then you, you might get to draw a card and you have a 4-2 flyer. That's That can be a lot, right? Let's say you get to do this for Magic Christmas Land. It only costs you like two mana. 
two mana, four, two, your opponent discards a card. They either discard an expensive thing or you get to draw a card. That that feels like really solid value for two mana. My problem, though, is on the games where things don't necessarily go according to plan. Like, let's say you have this, but you only hit a couple of land or something. And you've also got a Braids, and maybe you have a Deep Cavern Bat and some lands. This doesn't feel so stellar anymore. You know what I mean? Like, then we have to pay, like, uh, I don't know, let's say four mana for it. Still not bad as a 4-2 flyer. And, you know, either opponent discards an expensive thing or, or you get to draw a card. But then it also dies to pretty much everything, right? It's not punching past anything. It is a flyer, don't be wrong. But in the current world of standard, it's probably running into a warden or something and not doing a whole lot. It's going to die to every removal spell that Mono Red is playing, so you're not going to survive anything. Especially right now, Slick Shot's going to probably trample past it and ding you. And they're not even going to care about their hand being emptied, for the most part, right? Because they're not going to have a bunch of stuff in hand anyway. So that being said, I would almost rather this be... I think, is it Souls of the Lost? And this is just... You can discard or sacrifice a permanent when you cast it. And then its power is equal to the number of permanents in your graveyard, not just creatures. So, granted, it's going to be mostly creatures in there anyway. But if you flipped over a Virtue of Persistence or an Invasion of Amiket or whatever, it also counts those. So, it possibly ends up being a bit bigger. Definitely going to be bigger than a two toughness all the time. And possibly going to just be more power, right? A lot of times it's going to be like a 5-6 or a 7-8 or whatever. And that's just way more intimidating for the guaranteed two mana. And it's something you can also play early. You don't have it sitting in your hand, right? So if you have nothing else good to do, you're just like, okay, I'll play this. Maybe I have a 2-3 or something early on, and we'll just see how this goes. So I would be more inclined to play this. Also weird, too, that your Harvester of Mystery, Harvester of Mystery might actually also kill your Hollow Marauder, and that's kind of sad. <laughs> I don't think that's really what you want to be doing. So I would cut these to play more Souls of the Lost. And then, like, this has a purpose, obviously. We're milling ourselves. But I kind of hate that it's just a random 3 after that. Right? Is and I don't even know. I'd have to play this to see how I feel about it. But I'm wondering, like, is milling those three cards that big of a deal to make up for me just having an 0-3 on the battlefield? And is there nothing else better we could do? Because, like, is there... And I don't even know. I'm about to look and just say, like, if there's anything else we could just mill ourselves with that would be more exciting. Like, Picklock Prankster feels better. Because, like, we can mill ourselves. I mean, we don't have a ton of instants or sorceries to get back, right? So we're mostly getting back either, like, go for the throat or cut down or whatever. But it is also a 1-3 flyer with vigilance. So it's at least going to possibly be able to kill stuff, and it can both attack and block. So I'm probably more inclined to play this than I am to play the archaeologist. And then some random times, you will also just hit another picklock prankster, and you can just pick that up and play that, right? So that feels a little bit better. I am kind of wanting a couple more removal pieces of some kind in here. And maybe even cut an undead butler. While, it, again, it does mill, and I'm okay with that. I just don't know how many undead butlers we're trying to get into cycling each turn and returning and trying to play stuff or whatever. But with Souls of the Lost, that does give more value to the to the butler. Uh, you also have Invasion of Amonkhet, which mills... Both players, you can copy stuff in their graveyard. Picklock Prankster is also a flyer that makes it easier to hit the invasion if you're trying to turn that into a creature. Um, Are we trying to... Maybe are we cutting a Braids? Is that what we're trying to do, maybe? Because I'm trying to think, like, what all would we want to be discarding? And, like, I would probably cut a Braids. We could cut... We don't even have to play Go for the Throats here. We could just play... 
Oh, what's the thing? Uh, discard and also let you destroy a planeswalker. Bitter Triumph. This thing. Because this also fills our graveyard. And, like, that feels better. Like, again, not completely necessary, but it does feel a lot better. I think my concern, now that I'm looking at it, though, is how would this deck fare against, like, the Boros Tokens deck? And I don't think this is bad, because you have, like, your own early creatures. You start playing these, they're going to have bigger power and toughness. So they're not ever really going to get to punch through. It's just at one point, does, like, do you get to finish them? You're really going to need Bitter Triumphs to kill their Flyers more than anything else, right? Their ways to beat you probably is going to involve some number of Wardens, if I were guessing. Uh, there's no really way to gain... Well, that's not true. I guess you have a little bit of life gain from the Virtue of Persistence and technically Deep Cavern Bat, but in those fights, you're not really getting to attack with the Bat. It's just sitting on defense. Uh, yeah, probably something closer to this. I don't know why. I feel like there was a new graveyard thing in this set that I'm just forgetting about. And there were so many new OTJ cards. I have definitely not learned them all yet. But I feel like there was something else in Thunder Junction that cared about graveyard, but maybe not. Though, Lively Dirge is cute. It does put a thing in the graveyard and let you get things back. And since your stuff's super cheap, that could for real be like, get back Somniphage and Soul of the Lost, which could be like big seven power creatures or something. So it's kind of amusing. I don't know if it's a card we want, but it's something to think about. Um, I might, to help those early matchups out, maybe even cut a Vermin and play another cut down or go to four Bitter Triumphs. But this feels better than where we were, right? More consistent. We can still mill ourselves. Even with an extra card, we can remove things or fill up our graveyard as necessary. We get the option to have bigger bodies with Souls of the Lost now. Uh, still keep the Harbor of Mis Harvester of Mystery because I think the card's still good. But yeah, this feels better than where we were. I don't know if... And again, I feel like I'm missing something, so I'm going to apologize because I feel like there's definitely something I'm missing from Thunder Junction that I'm just not putting my finger on. But I feel like I remember reading another card that cared about stuff in your graveyard. The other part of that is I read a bunch of cards for Thunder Junction. Maybe I just made that up as well. I don't know. <laughs> like It's very possible. I mean, I guess there's Lazav. Uh, whenever you commit crimes, then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If the creature was exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy. That's actually how many criming things do we have? Uh, cruel somnophage mills target player. You're probably just going to mill yourself. I mean, just turning Lazab into a souls of the lost or something sounds kind of fun. But uh, oh, Rakdos joins up. You're right. That's a good call. I think I think that's the card I was thinking of. Yeah, and that triggers off legendaries too. All right. Yeah, not the card I think we want for this list. But yeah, definitely was one that was on my mind. But yeah, this feels better. I think you just have the option for more sizable creatures here. Uh, you still have a couple of real problematic creatures for your opponent on their own. When you're talking about like Harvester, can also kill the small things. You can get into a situation where you're getting big things back. We have a fair amount of removal with three Bitter Triumph, two Cut Down, Technically, Harvester of Misery and the Virtue of Persistence. So you should be able to fight those fights as necessary. Invasion of Amonkhet adds to some discard options you got going on along with the bat. So like, yeah, this is at least checking all the right boxes. I think it's going to struggle against just the hardcore control type decks. And you're going to have to try to find a way to play the long game. Which means I would probably want way more Restless Reefs. How many lands are we playing? This is, again, I like, I love y'all, and I am the king of skimping on lands, but so many y'all brought lists today that were like 2022 20, lands or whatever, and trying to, though, I will say, this list can probably get away with a couple of lands, 
the only concern this list has is if you mill a couple of your lands, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So just keep that in mind. But uh, this deck being predominantly black cards, I think we only need two islands. And that's just if they destroy our stuff and we need to go search for them. I think we want to go a full set of reefs. I think that is necessary because I think the control matchups are going to be very difficult. And having these just to have creature lands will be helpful. Um, I'm kind of debating how many surveil lands this deck wants. Because putting something late in the graveyard that's kind of junky that you don't really care about, you know, say like a vermin or something or whatever, to make whenever the creature's bigger, does have some value. But I don't think I'm going to over-worry about that too much. I think I would leave the land like this. So... Two cut down, three vermin, four prankster, three triumph, three somnophage, four deep cavern bat, four souls, four undead butler. Though undead butler, while it is doing something, still feels a little weak. So if you had another card you wanted to play instead of that, uh, oh, there is the fairy. Uh, you're obviously not an OTJ or whatever, though. This guy, the likeness looter. I actually don't hate this card. It does draw and discard, so it'll give you another way to fill your graveyard. But it can become a copy of something in your graveyard as well, which means you could still keep flying and have like a big 7-7 seven, seven Soul of the Lost in the air, which is kind of cool. So it is a 1-1, one, one, you know, so it is fragile. Don't get me wrong. It's not like the auto-include or anything. But if you want to experiment and maybe play one less Undead Butler and one less of something else, you can try squeezing a couple of these in and see how it goes for you. Because being able to copy a Sarnif Carnophage, uh, Somnophage or a Souls of the Lost could just be game winning, right? If they don't have any more flyers, you're like, great, I'm going to attack with this like 8-8, eight, eight, and that's it. So something to think about a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, still your two Harvester of Mystery, the two braids for invasion of Amiket, your two virtual persistence and then two islands ottawa four swamp ta two takanuma for each of dark click shores restless reef underground river and one undercity sewers so there you go there's that all right let's see what else we've got did we do 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 all right it looks like we got through everybody all right i feel like we did a thing we we achieved a goal <laughs> uh, all right i didn't wasn't sure we were gonna get there but yeah that was a good one we, we've done over two hours and we talked about a lot of different decks uh, all right so while i have a chance let's switch gears for a second here we went through all the submitted decks is there a card this is just discussion time is there a card or a deck type that you haven't seen anybody play yet that you're curious about. So maybe we can talk about why. Maybe we can talk about what a deck could look like. Is it good or bad against certain metagame stuff? Whatever. Because I think there's always going to, especially a set like this, where there's so many rares and mythics all trying to do stuff. Uh, Frostbite, what's going on? Says, and here I thought this was the Taylor Swift album drop chat. Imagine how surprised I was to find Magic Talk. Man, you know what? I bet you if I was talking about Taylor Swift, there'd be like a thousand people in the chat probably just killing me right now. <laughs> not because I don't like Taylor Swift, just I'm not a Swifty and I don't know the names of any songs or whatever. Though I got mad respect for her, honestly. Like following her career and like the stuff she's done and the amount of money she's been able to make despite getting pushed out of the community from the country music crowd. and where People forgot that was even a thing. Uh, she got shunned and basically became like a pop artist and reinvented herself and now makes like a billion dollars a year, whatever the hell, like good on her, man. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Has anyone mentioned a treasure deck? Uh, no, but I do have some ideas on one of those. High noon with all the multiple spell focus. I wonder how it slots into control decks. You know, that's a good one to talk about. Um, We'll just bring it up here to have a point of discussion. But this card, we've had versions of this before. I believe we've had a blue one and a white one previously. Now, they didn't have the upside of being able to sacrifice it and deal five damage. 
though you do need red mana to do that. I there's not realistically, I think once you get past like turn four, there's not a ton of decks playing a ton of spells on each turn, at least in my experience. You know, a lot of times we're playing like one and leaving mana up on your turn to try to like kill a thing or whatever during your end step or flash something in or whatever the case may be. Now, against something like the Boros Tokens deck or whatever, yeah, they definitely want to play like as many spells as they can early. Even if it's just like, okay, I'm going to play a dude, I'm going to use my Knight Errant of Eos, and I'm going to get another one mana thing in hand. I'm going to play that, and I'm going to try to set up a big attack, right? You can shut some of that down with this card. But, and maybe even some of the mono red builds, possibly. But against like Golgari midrange stuff, mono black midrange, any of the control decks, hell, even most of the gruel stuff is just casting like big body go, you know, after like turn four, maybe playing, leaving a mana up to have a defensive card or something. Just not really a thing. This feels like it might just be better in other formats than just standard, but could also just be a good sideboard card. And with the Pro Tour coming up in a week that's going to be standard, I would not be surprised if you see the sideboarded in some list. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oko, uh, you know, I don't know how I feel about Oko. Because I almost feel like this could go in some type of Simic aggro y thing, right? Because Oko just becomes a copy of the other big thing. And I think. Like, if you already have something that's like a 6-6 six, six or an 8-8, eight, eight, and you're like, cool, I just get it for free, and it has hexproof, great. You know, like, or if Oko's sitting on the board, and then you cast a new big creature, then Oko becomes a copy of that. Well, now it's almost like you got a haste version of it for a turn, which is cool. And then worst case scenario, you're like, okay, I guess I'll just make an elk. You know, like, why not? Right? That seems fine. Uh, for each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. That's pretty sweet. I don't know how often we'll get to that, but if it goes off, it feels like that's probably, like, unless your opponent has an immediate sweeper or something to deal with those permanents, you're probably going to win, right? Because literally for every non-land card you have, you just make a copy of it. So you get two of everything. So, yeah, I think Oko's probably pretty solid. I just, the thing about Oko, and again, I think we might see it played a bit coming up in next weekend, is I think it's going to be a matter of just finding the deck that can take advantage of each of these parts, right? Because making a 3-3 is cool, copying a creature is cool, you know, maybe even copying all your permanents is neat, but, like, is there any build that, maybe not even every part, maybe two of the three parts or some, or four parts, I guess. Like, but I feel like right now, the only things I've seen really are doing, like, one thing of the four with Oko, and I think the deck that can do the most of the things and take advantage of it would probably be the spot where you want it. Uh, all right, let's see what else we got. Somebody's mentioning, make your own luck. Looks like it could be breakable to sneak into super high cost permanence to bolster your hand. Uh, did I open one of these yet? Make your own luck. Is that the blue green card? It is the blue green card. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may exile a non-land card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted. Um, the issue I had with this card when I was deck building and thinking about stuff was how often am I getting something that either costs significantly more than five, so like seven plus, or that I wouldn't have just been okay casting next turn if it costs six? Or what are the things would I play that cost five instead of casting Make Your Own Luck? Right? But the thing I like about it is you don't just get the one spell you get to put the rest into your hand, right? That's the part I think goes overlooked from this because you're like, okay, cool. I can exile something and then the rest just go into the hand. That's cool, <laughs> right? Like, why not? But so worst case scenario, you're probably getting, I mean, you get three cards, right? Why not? So it's probably worth playing. I just don't know what the deck looks like where I'm getting the most value. Like, paying five mana to draw three, effectively, I mean, you can get to play one the next turn. 
but you're effectively paying five, draw three. It's still really good. Or draw two, play a free spell next turn. Like, nothing wrong with that. I just don't know what that list looks like. Am I, like, playing ramp plus this, and maybe I'm trying to get, like, sneaky and put a, I don't know, Tyranix Rex plotted that I just get next turn? <laughs> you know, like, I don't, there's, there's probably a world where there's something you can do with this, but, man, I don't even know what it would be, I think is the issue. Uh, why are Leyline Binding card style mythic when the card is rare? Why is the Leyline Binding card style mythic when the card is rare? Oh, oh, that's probably just somebody put the wrong symbol on it. I was having a hard time understanding what you're saying. You're saying the card style that gives you like the borderless whatever of Leyline Binding apparently has a mythic symbol instead of a rare symbol. That's fine. That's not something we even need to worry about. Uh, make your own luck is easy to play fast due to Simic Ramp, so dropping something huge enchantment on turn four seems fairly plausible. On ability. Yeah, that's the problem, though. It's just like, is it any better than just playing the thing instead of waiting to play the thing the next turn? I think that's what I'm struggling with. Uh, JTX78 says, OMG, I finally got a live stream. Well, hey, thank you for stopping by, JTX. Uh, I want to try this out, try out this Oko with Nathan Store and the profs. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about uh, Prophesidic memory, and uh, the new guy that's an O one, but gets bigger for each card you've drawn for the turn until end of turn. Yeah, that's there's probably something there with Oko, and yeah, there's probably a thing. I'll tell you what's really sick. Um, plot draw seven. Did I not open one of those? Maybe, maybe that's not the right wording. But there's a blue card that you plot. And you draw, everybody shuffles their hand. Basically like the time walk, this. But if you play this, whenever you have the other things out, like the dude that gets bigger for you drawing cards, and you have Prof's Eidetic Memory, like you can do a ton of damage in a turn. Because this is everybody shuffles, you draw your seven. You'll get seven card draw credits plus the one you drew for the turn. So that's eight. So then like you're putting eight counters on a guy plus the other creature automatically just gets bigger because you drew seven for the turn. That's a big hit. Like, pretty crazy. Now, admittedly, you probably only want to do it if you think you can win that turn because you don't want to play it on the... let the opponent take advantage of the extra cards. But pretty sweet if you can pull it off. I've, I've seen that before. I got beat by it in one game. It's actually pretty awesome. Uh, let's see what else we got. I don't think I see many Is It decks other than the one video you made a little bit ago. And it's going to stay that way. It's not very good. I mean, hopefully somebody proves us wrong, but so far, everyone I've seen is not that threatening. Everyone I've built feels very bad. And if you were here at the beginning of the stream, we kind of talked about that a little bit between is it and just guy spells based decks. The biggest problem right now is that your individual creatures are not as good as your opponent's individual creatures, and you have to stick your spells to make them do something. If you get too many creatures or too many spells, the deck struggle. If you have your creature dealt with in response to one of your spells, your deck struggles, right? Because your spells are kind of just, they're okay, but you're mostly playing them to get by to pump your stuff and kind of keep your hand fueled or whatever. So it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I don't know if that's the way is it needs to be going, but I will say this. If it doesn't work this season with the extra things they've added to it to make it possible, it's probably not going to work for a while. I think it's still possible because Slick Shot's pretty awesome. You got a couple of spells that are neat. The new three mana uh, character that actually you can plot a card after you play it. Like, there's some good stuff going on. So I think it's possible, but it might also be a case too where it has to thread the needle in the right spot in the metagame to to really work. Uh, dun, 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 dun. What else we got here? Astro MTG just gives a good yeehaw. How's it going? Yeah, I had my I had to take a video uh, picture earlier with my hat on so I can make a good thumbnail earlier. Uh, there's also a black sorcery with plot that lets you draw per permanent you sack that I think we might see in the prof stack. All right, let's see what we got. Said it's a plot spell and it's in black. That lets you draw per thing you sacrifice. This lets you sack a creature, draw cards. Player draws two cards. Oh, this thing. 
Sacrifice any number of permanents you control, then draw. No, I don't think this wants to be in those same decks with the draw stuff we were just talking about. I don't. The problem is, like, you want all your permanents. Unless you're just the turn you're going to go off and you're just like, you know what? I'm going to sack my lands too. I don't care. Right? Like, if you have that turn, then absolutely. Right? If it just sets up that way and if you have the right creature and you've got a prophet's eidetic memory, that is hilarious. If you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to pay for I'm going to sack all my lands and whatever and boom, go for it. Right? You just have to hope your opponent doesn't have the removal or counter or you're just done for, which is hilarious. But maybe, I mean, I'm not going to say absolutely not, but I don't know if it's necessary. I feel like this is, this is, I hate the term win more because I don't think it's accurate. I think this is what you call win better. I feel like most of the scenarios where you would use this, several other cards that let you draw two or three or whatever are probably still going to let you win anyway. You don't have to go the extra length to sacrifice your things to get those extra cards. Because I'm trying to, like, I'm sure there's some scenario where your opponent's like at, at 16 or something, and you happen to have five or six lands, and you've already drawn a card, and then you sack all your stuff. And, like, there's probably some scenario where it comes out that way. But generally, I would think your opponent's going to be at, like, 10 or 12. Cool. Let me play something where I just draw three cards. Plus, I get the three bonus counters from the eidetic memory. Plus story or triggers anyway so i get those and like i'm probably gonna come close to killing my opponent anyway you probably don't need to go out of your way to sacrifice all your stuff you could play like one just for funsies of fun of and if you hit it great but i don't i don't know if this card helps you win more games by being in your list it feels like more often you're just gonna win the same games with more style points and just win better i guess is the way i would look at it uh Hi there. Do you help people with their decks? Hey, chat. Do we help people with the decks? We absolutely do help people with their decks. Uh, we did a lot of that for like two hours. But you know what? I'm going to check something. Let's let's put uh, Le Lacornis Van Cron. That is a, a fancy sounding name. I love it. Let's put you to the test. I'm going to go to YouTube. And I'm going to see if you are subscribed to my channel. If you are, we will go ahead and make an exception. And we will look at your deck list. <laughs> We're putting you on the spot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do a quick scan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you're already there. I don't know if you are. Uh, let me check here. If in the chat you come up with a thing. Uh, oh no, I don't know if I see you in here. All right, chat, I'm going to, I'm going to put Van Krantz destiny in your hands. Do I take this time to look at their deck list? This, if the, if the chat's on your side, we get to do this. <laughs> We'll see. I'll give it a couple of seconds. Just give me a Y for a yes and N for a no. And we should take a look at their deck list. Because the queue is clear, technically. I wasn't going to do another one. But, hey, they asked politely. They showed up late. Do we get to... to oh, we got some... Oh, here we go. We, we got three yeses, four yeses, five yeses. Oh, it looks like they're on your side, buddy. Oh, it's all yeses. All right, cool. All right, all right, I'm 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 into it. Let's do it. And it looks like on every channel. So, all right, here's what we're going to do. Uh, let me go ahead, dig up the link real quick. And we'll let you go to the Discord. And you post it in my standard chat, my standard channel. And uh, we'll take care of you. We'll give you a second for that. So let me go over here. And I will post the link in the chat. And then all you got to do is go there and then go to the standard channel and I will snag your deck list for you. How about that? <laughs> hey, the Dragon Brood's good people. We're lo They're looking out. They're looking out. I'll take about, I can give you about 10 or 15 minutes. Take a look. Let's see what you got. 
But yeah, I, I think this set just has a lot of really good. I saw somebody playing Pillage the Bog the other day too. I know that that was kind of neat. Because what I didn't like, okay, so this card, you look at the top X card, your library. X is twice the number of lands you control. You put one of them into your hand, the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So basically, you get to look at the top X cards and you get whatever the best of them is. The thing that was interesting about this card to me that I totally hadn't even considered is just like it's basically two mana, especially late game, to just look at like six cards. So you can very often look at six cards and still have four mana open. No, actually, it's twice the number of lands. So you might be able to look at 10 cards or 12 cards, right? Like, it's a really good card. Like, I don't know, because it's like, it's a pseudo tutor. I wouldn't call it a true tutor, obviously, you can't just go get whatever out of the deck. But like, if you get to look at 12 cards on turn six, that's it, probably a third of your deck that's left. You know what I mean? You're looking at a good chunk. There's a good chance if you have three or four of something, you'll probably find the card you're looking for. So, like, I'm really trying to decide, like, if this is the type of card that should just be in a lot of black-green decks for late game. Right? Imagine just being like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just dig up a shield and cast it. Like, you know what I mean? You'll be able to do that. Right? Like, that's a realistic thing. Like, it's it's kind of cool. Again, I don't know where it fits. I don't know what we're trying to do with it. I don't know if it needs to go in more plot decks or something or whatever, but it's a it's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. It's a card keep your eyes on. It's it's super super good. Uh, all right, let me go check and see if they posted in the Discord. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I do not have a thing from them. Do, 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 do. All right, still waiting. We had everybody vote. So Van Kronk, come on. We got to get you to post it so I can I can uh, see what you're working with. But yeah, um, let's talk about some other things then while we're waiting on Van Kronk here. Some other deck things. I have a pile of things that I'm working on. Oh, this is a fun one. I'm going to mess around with this some more. This is definitely not a final list, at least at this point. But playing the things that make like 3-3 Golems uh, with Malkator, also Matterweaver that can copy target or copy tokens or make 1-1s, one uh, playing some Mondrak to copy all the tokens, Teething Wormlet and Gallag Readers to make more artifacts, like just doing some silly things and then having Kayla's Reconstruction because if you can hit a couple of these, then you just get like extra tokens or whatever, which could be kind of fun. So I don't know if this is like a real thing, but crazy idea of stuff you can do with new cards. Um, yeah, there's like, I think it's going to take a few weeks. Oh, you said just post it in standard. All right, I'll snag it. Right. Uh, uh oh, wait, I do not see it. Oh, wait, I see you have a different username than you do. And oh, gotcha. Oh, no, you posted it in the Architect. I'll still go get it. But, man, that site, I feel some kind of way about it. <laughs> Actually, the thing about the site is the site's really cool. But I feel like it's too flashy for me. Like, a lot of times, I'm like, I just want to click on a card. And I just want a card to do a thing. But, like, stuff's, like, sliding around the screen and, you know, whatever. And has all these extra graphics over it. I'm like, man, I don't need all that to just look at a deck list. All right, let me see if I can export from this page, if I can remember how to do this. Uh, let's see. There we go. Export deck. Oh, gosh. Um, copy to arena. Copy clipboard. Okay, there's a couple extra clicks, but doable. All right. Let's bring this in over here. We have imported deck. Where is it? Number six. All right. So we got a Mardu list. Let's see what we're working with. All right, there's a lot of one ofs, so there's definitely going to be a lot to work with on that or work on on this. Because if you have this many one ofs, that means we have things that are not going to be as important as other cards. And then we have other cards that definitely we should have more of. So we've got Escape, Requisition Raid, which uh, gives plus ones, destroys an artifact or an enchantment. Rustler Rampage, untap all the creatures, creatures get double strike. Skrell with 4 4. We have Surge of Salvation, Cut Down, Train Heist, which I actually kind of like Train Heist. Uh, family Reunion, I forgot what this even did. You get to put plus one, plus one, 
on a creature or give something hexproof. All right. Fateful Absence, which is removal. Flare of Faith, give something plus two. If it's a human, it gets plus three. Get Loss, Battle Rage Blessing, Ancestor's Day. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. So, a couple of things here. Is my first question would be, what are we trying to do with this list? Maybe you sacrifice an artifact, deal two damage to them. Because uh, there's a lot going on here, and there's a lot of spells that I don't think are supporting the overall plan. Like, there's a lot of stuff that just, like, randomly pumping creatures and, you know, like, all right, this creates a treasure. That's cool. But we're not really doing anything with treasure except for food fighting, maybe? Like... We kind of care about the opponent having treasure because of stuff like Vengeful Tracker. So if they use it, they take damage, and that's cool. And we can sack some stuff with Rider Oblivion. I like Comball, the opponent getting stuff, right? We also get things, and then they lose life. So I kind of get where this is all going. Delny lets all this stuff trigger multiple times. The Blood Vial Purveyor, you're giving him a blood token, but it doesn't work with Delny really. And Okay, but I see where we're going. I don't hate it. But, like, Skrelv is mostly fine. Not what I would say is, like, really supporting the plan, but it's okay. I mean, like, Family Union, give you something hexproof is fine. I guess the problem is, I'm having a hard time figuring out, like, are we trying to be defensive or are we trying to be aggressive? And then once we sort that out, what is the key thing we're trying to do with the deck? Because like Furious Bellows, like this seems completely out of place. Plunder, I at least get, right? Because you have the plan of like, we gave them more permanence and then we get to attack and we get to deal extra damage. Like, yeah, we take the risk of them having artifacts, but whatever, right? So I, I can at least understand, get behind that a little bit. Food fight is another way to try to win, so I'm okay with that. Demand answers is fine. Like, you get to draw cards, so I can, like, talk myself into that a little bit. Uh, please read the Discord, and it's all explained there. Uh, all right. It would have been much better to have this in chat, but we'll do it from the Discord. I started playing the game after years. You need some help. Uh, with this deck, here's the game plan. Flood the opponent with artifacts. Then punish the opponent for keeping the artifacts. Punish the opponent for using them. Cumball drains her life. Delny triggers. Cool. Pretty confident about the creatures in the deck. Don't know what to add as non-creature spells. Made a list of the cards you think you're interested in. Okay. Notable information, most of the creatures are human. Cool. You do better with the lands, but you use what you have. Like that, I understand. Lands are always going to be a thing. Just over time, you collect enough of them or not. Um, No, your English is totally fine. I, you don't have to apologize about your English. I think you, you did great. I kind of like what's going on. Again, don't dislike anything. I think we have to clean up the creature, well, really the spell selection, and make sure they are supporting what the creatures are trying to do. And try to figure out some way to win. And, and what I mean by that is, technically, we can win through Tracker and Comball or whatever. But our only real way to win, if we don't get wrecked by the opponent using the treasure that we're giving them, is with Blood Vial Purveyor, which is still a threatening card, but it also is only bigger for blood tokens, not for treasure or anything else we're giving them. So I'm wondering, hmm, is there anything we could get for, like, Artifacts entering your battlefield. 
Like, do uh, I feel like if there was something else, I'm trying to figure out, like maybe some benefit we get. Like, we could turn this into a treasure deck of sorts. And maybe, hmm. Like, what if we played another combo? Maybe another Delny. Trying to, like, trim up some of the spells. Like, Molten Duplication is interesting, but I'm not sure what we would be copying. I mean, unless you copy just, like, another Blood Vial Purveyor or something on a kill turn. So, like, I think this card's solid. I just don't know if this is the deck for it. So, like, I'm willing to cut that. Demand answers I'm willing to cut in a weird way because Blood Vial Purveyor plus Comball technically generates more blood, blood tokens for us. So, I don't know if that's a thing. Um, Another interesting thing, too, is you could play just more of the cards that produce blood tokens. Yeah, I mean, I, I get we could copy Generous Plunder, but I don't, I just don't think we need to. I don't think that's the best use for the card, and I think there's other things we could be doing to better support the deck. Uh, especially if we want to try to take advantage of Comball, because right now, Comball's really not doing much unless you have Plunder or Purveyor out. So what I would consider, we have Get Lost, we've got Fateful Absence. What if we... I'm going to try to clear up a couple of things here. I'm just going to go through the list. Uh, stuff getting double strikes kind of nice. Train Heist can produce treasure. Uh, maybe get another attack step. But I, I don't... Hmm. Train Heist is almost like pseudo double strike in a way. Because you can get an extra attack step anyway. Uh... Yeah, I don't think we need Requisition Raid on top of having Fateful Absence and Get Lost, because those can destroy a bunch of permanents as well. We don't need that. Could probably cut down one Skrell that is legendary. Surge of Salvation is not bad. Yeah, I mean, totally. Like, I get the people are playing what they have, but here's the problem. Unless I see somebody's entire collection, all I'm going to do is give suggestions on what I can do I think could get it to the place where it should be. And then as they get the cards that they can get, then they can work toward that. Or put in the closest facsimile they have in commons or uncommons. Uh, train heist is fun, not going to lie. Yeah, I do like that as well. All right, so... Battle Rage Blessing. Target creature gains death touch and indestructible. Don't hate it. We're trying to protect our creatures, but there's a point where like we have too many defensive cards. Like at some point, we have to be trying to move the train forward. We already have Skrells, we have Surge of Salvation. Rustler Rampage, I'm willing to cut. Man, I wish there was just hmm. What if we cut right? How many lands do we have in here? We have 24, so that's reasonable. Um, I think what I'm trying to decide is do we want more cards that make treasure or more cards that make blood tokens? Because with seven remaining slots, you could play some number of... Um, there's two cards. You could play either... Do, 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 do. Epicure, which deals some damage and gives you a blood token and a creature. And or Blood Tithe Harvester. However, if we go to Treasure, you do get some other interesting options in things like Magda. Though we don't have a bunch of stuff that targets the opponent's things, so we would have to change up a few spells. But every time you commit a crime, you get a treasure. If you have three plus treasure, you could sacrifice them and make a 4-4 four, four, uh, dragon with haste, which is pretty reasonable. This would also get double triggered. 
uh, as far as making the treasure from Delny, which is pretty sweet. So that's a real thing because it's power two or less. So that's something that could work as a possible option. Uh, also, Riveteer's Requisitioner. So when it dies, it makes a treasure token and you have a 3 1 body. Like that's a thing you could do. Um, also, either of these, whether you want to do Bridges to make a treasure every turn or make something not block, or go with this with Professional Face Breaker. And then if you do have something connect to the opponent during combat, you can also make a treasure. So, like, those are some options. Um, mm, 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 mm. Trying to see if there's anything else that makes treasure I'd be excited about. It's sushi is also not bad. It's another flying creature that's hard to deal with. That's relevant. It can die and make you treasure. Uh, and that's probably it. I don't think we have too much else. So yeah, um, let's see. Ancestor's Aid. Something gets First Strike and Treasure. I don't think we need... I think we can find room for other stuff. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea. I wish there were just more good ways to give the opponent stuff that we could benefit from. But right now, it's really kind of... Just plunder and blood vial purveyor. But I like what we're trying to do. Like on paper, I like all the concepts. Guards are in one are exemplar or just to see here if I play them or not. The ones who are in multiples are definitely in the deck. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Nicholas says the likeness looter and the picklock prankster suggestion was helpful. Oh, from earlier. Yeah, you're welcome. Hmm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Man, I might just go with the vampires that make the extra blood tokens. Because you do want more things that just make tokens anyway to trigger your own combo more often. I mean, that's just gaining life and hurting your opponent. And if they make tokens, you just get a bonus if you give them something. But you kind of at least want to take advantage of that if possible, I think. So, yeah, probably Epicure. And uh, the other Vampire Blood Token. Where are we at? The Harvester, I think it is. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Something like this. So Harvester also brings more removal to the table. By the way, these are both common, or commons and uncommons. We're talking about the Epicure and the Harvester, so that helps if you're tight for resources, but those do a little damage. You get some extra removal. The Epicure will still trigger under Delny. Unfortunately, Harvester doesn't because it's three power, but you do get Comball, Vengeful Tracker, Plunder, all extra triggers with Delny. So this is kind of cool. Uh, can Delny make uh No, actually, I guess not, because it does say only once each turn. So it actually, well, let me be more correct. Whenever a thing enters the, under your control, you would still get to deal twice that damage. However, when your opponent makes a token, that will only trigger one turn no matter what, because it can only trigger once per turn. So the number of tokens you get only happens once. But the damage, because that doesn't have a limiter on it, you can do that as many times in a turn. So if you have Delny and you play an Epicure, it makes a artifact your opponent loses two then you play harvester you make an artifact your opponent loses two but if your opponent plays i don't know let's say you have combo and they play uh gleeful demolition where they make the three goblin tokens you would trigger one time to make three goblin tokens because it's when one or more tokens is made but you won't get multiple triggers well, we didn't get that anyway. So, like, you only get the goblins once, but then you get the damage twice. As weird as that is. Basically what I'm saying. Like, so, it halfway works under Delny. But that's okay, because you really just want the part that destroys their life total more often. And you get to gain life, which is pretty sweet. So, something like this, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Food Fight says, sacrifice an artifact that deals damage to any one target equal to one plus the number of permanents. Oh, it's actually with food, not with... Oh, so you'd just be able to sack for one on each of these? Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. I mean, it's still something. Basically just turns every artifact into pay two, deal one. Eh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> like, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. Hmm. Hmm. Their opponent sacks a thing, sure. Pay to sacrifice this artifact. It deals one damage to any target equal to one plus the number of permanents named food fight you control. So you deal two. Yeah, all right. That's fine. Like, it's not crazy, but hey, it's another way to win. If you just have a bunch of artifacts still sitting around, it's a way that you can just top deck, spend some mana, and get out of trouble. Train heist is fine. Could give you just... Free combat, give stuff first strike. I'm into it. Yeah, this is probably at least cleaner. I think you can win more games with this because now we've also upped the creature count quite a bit. You're now at 27, so you have more threats. You have more removal. You have more damage. Still have a few defensive cards in Skrell, Surge of Salvation. You do have a couple of surprise cards with Great Train Heist and Food Fight, which I think people may not be prepared for, which is kind of cool. Ventral Tracker, a little weak, but works with what we're trying to do with the deck, right? Where we're giving them some blood tokens, we're giving them some treasure tokens. Like, it has a job it's trying to do. You know, and if you have Delny, then it's just bonus if they try to blow up the treasure. So that's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, this is probably a lot better than where we were, I think. So yeah, I think this is a little cleaner. Still gives you more ways to win, some upside, a good amount of removal. So like, you can deal with a variety of threats. I'm I'm into it. I think this could work. Be interested to see if it works better for you than where you were. But I feel like it's just, this is at least more consistent. Of course, lands are always going to be a thing. You just got to work with what you got. You know, um, you probably want more red and white lands than black lands. But otherwise, you know, you can only do what you can do. But all right, y'all, we're coming up on almost five o'clock. So uh, what I want to do is I want to start by asking everybody, if you haven't already, wherever you are listening to this, whether it's on Facebook, on YouTube, on uh, Twitch, on Twitter, please take the time to follow me, to subscribe, to like the video, because that helps a lot. Like, it's a free thing you get to do that really does help, and it encourages other people, and especially the algorithms, to share the videos with other humans. So we get some extra reach out of it. So please, pretty please, if you'd be so kind, take a second, click a button. That'd be nice. Uh, if you want to support the channel more directly, we do have a membership uh, group on YouTube where you get bonus videos, you get some extra input on what we're going to put on the channel. You get some extra emotes to use in chats, stuff like that. So that's a thing you can do there. And obviously you can subscribe on Twitch as well. And that that's helpful. So. Lots of things you can do to support the channel that are free. Uh, and I also have like merchandise and stuff on YouTube, but that's a whole thing. But yeah, y'all, we covered, I feel like we covered a lot of stuff today. I don't know. We went through like 10 deck lists or something. <laughs> like we learned a lot about a lot of the cards, a lot of different strategies. Uh, I don't know if any of those I will make any appearances of on the YouTube channel. I still have, oh my gosh, I don't know how many decks that we haven't even gotten around to yet. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like twelve, like like two weeks worth of decks before we even come around to me like having to brainstorm any more stuff. So lots of stuff still to go down. But man, Thunder Junction is hot. Like there's a lot of good cards in the set. There's a lot of decks you can build. Also, don't forget that the Pro Tour next week is standard. So they're gonna do, I believe, six rounds of draft. And the rest is going to be standard action. So by the end of the weekend, you'll see a lot of standard deck ideas. And I will say this, just as a heads up, whatever comes out of that tournament, don't automatically look at that as the best standard deck. It might be, but I'm saying, but don't automatically assume that because of two things. One, the metagame will shift very quickly after that event. Because now people have decks that they're targeting when they're deck building. And that's going to change people's deck building decisions and how they play. 
But additionally, those final standings will also include those six rounds of draft that people played. So those affect who ends up making top eight or whatever. And the results may have been different if those six rounds were also played standard. So something I think a lot of people go, oh, this deck won the Pro Tour. I got to play it, right? And a lot of times it's going to be a good deck. It's just not necessarily going to end up being the best deck even a week after the event. So it's varies a little bit there. Just something to keep in mind that I think people overlook sometimes. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with Thunder Junction, which is good because we're going to have Thunder Junction all the way until August this year. So middle of August when we get Bloomborough. So we have a lot of time to experiment with these cards. I expect you're going to see probably six or seven major shifts in the metagame between now and then because that's what? 14 weeks, something like that. We still have May, June, July, August. Uh, so it's, yeah, about 14 weeks that this is going to be standard legal. So a lot going on, man. This is this is cool. But this was a good stream. Lots of fun stuff. But I need to get something to drink. I need to grab a snack. And I need to go work on more videos for y'all. So you should follow me on the YouTubes because I literally have been putting up content for y'all every single day for four years now. And that's not even a joke. Like shorts reviews preview stuff gameplay videos like literally every day which is absolutely crazy that i can even say that but it's been four years and a month i think so crazy but anyway it was fun hanging out with y'all it was good seeing y'all uh wherever you are watching on youtube twitter uh facebook i mean like everywhere we have everybody right now and Twitch. So yeah, uh, wherever you're watching, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, because I know some of y'all are from across the world. Please remember to take care of yourselves and your family. Remember to be awesome. Most importantly, though, be awesome to each other. And I mean that.